the Glass Cannon Network. The world it's your old friend Troy and his good time pals. We're coming to you live. This is actually live right now. It's 8.05 p.m. Eastern. We're all sitting in our respective homes. Um, and we're, we're coming to you live to play some strange aeons. It's, we call it Glass Cannon Live when we're on the road. But when we're here sitting in the comfort of our homes, missing what I can only assume in assume will be an incredible football game um <laughs> incredible we call it incredible what do we call it we call it strange aeons in pathfinder 2e episode 48 that'll bring the new people to watch <laughs> that'll bring all the new folks to the yard um no thank you for joining us tonight this is very exciting obviously this is the second time we've gone live with this on twitch since we uh started the the new normal for us to uh go live on twitch in between tour dates uh speaking of which a week from sunday we'll we'll be back on the road in boston at, at what has really become our home club uh the paradise uh in boston it is uh uh with with the i think it's the club we've uh probably performed at most and uh we always uh, they always put on a they always show us a good time there and we love that crowd obviously and so there are tickets still available if you want to come out just go to glasscannonnetwork.com uh backslash live hyphen tour and uh buy tickets to the show there's even a couple vips left we're gonna have a good time and even sydney emmanuel is gonna be there sydney how the hell are you sydney me hi uh have you ever yeah, been to I'm boston so We've talked about this. I lived in Salem, Massachusetts for two years. That's not Boston. <laughs> Anyone can That's go to Massachusetts. Right. Oh, very good, Sydney. So have you ever been to Boston? <laughs> Sorry. Um, let me think. Interesting. Sure, I was yes. once in Phoenix, Arizona. <laughs> Didn't you go to high school in Danvers? I did. And yeah, I grew Troy. up in Haverhill. But I went to college in Boston. <laughs> And I made my bones no, on the streets of Newbury. <laughs> you went to college um, in Chestnut Hill, Massachusetts. <laughs> which is a suburb of Boston. So you know what's not a suburb of Boston? Wealthy Boston? Salem. <laughs> I do love I do love Boston. I can't wait. I saw somebody said uh they're going with their wife to the Boston show. I can't wait. Uh I'm excited. And I love Paradise Rock Club. It's a great venue. I've seen so many shows there, and I can't wait to You've been play to the there. Paradise? So cool. Yeah. What? Yeah. So you've like been yeah. there a bunch and now you're gonna play it? Amazing. It's going to be wild because it's a bit, it's a big venue. It's going to be super, super cool. Um, well, I'm excited to, to, to show you our backstage. We do different traditions in Boston uh, that usually involve Randy if he's in town. Um, yeah, that's true. Randy. <laughs> Wait, Sydney, yeah. have you met Randy? Have you ever met the no. Randy? Oh, the nation knows. Randy. Oh, no, you, Wait, you never, didn't you, you never it, met him for Androids and Aliens oh, when you, he was, when he would produce. That might've been before. Might have been I don't before, think he ever produced Androids. Oh. No, he did. Well, Who's Randy? Well, well. Who the hell is Randy? <laughs> You're going to have to just wait and find out. <laughs> Randy yeah, is a state Randy of mind. Is, uh, <laughs> Randy is yeah, a state Randy's of mind. a whole, he's his own deal. He's a whole deal. Oh, boy. <laughs> we are, uh, get, just to lift the curtain a little bit here, we're, uh, we're using new technology tonight um, while we go live. And uh, so far, I don't like it um, because Sydney <laughs> is an hour and a half behind uh, everything I say. And uh, whenever you guys laugh at me, uh, it, it comes just a little too late. So I know there's a delay, uh, but hopefully uh, you, the audience won't notice this shoddy technology. Um, this is, uh, this is good though. Me. We have to try you're, new things. You're synced. You're fine. Oh, I can tell. It's just, there's a, like, there's a delay. Maybe well, you're just I, 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 not that funny. And yeah, we're, say, you possible. sound pretty good like, to me. <laughs> like polite laughing, laughing the after air. a second. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. So uh, bear with us as we stumble through for the next ninety minutes. Uh, no, this will be fine. This is we have to try new things, uh, and this is a uh... Joe. Talk to me. What is this nonsense we're doing here? 
Uh, we're would doing. Would they be interested in it? Uh, would they be interested? Maybe. We're. Hmm. I'll tell you what. We're not doing Skype. That's that's the big yeah. thing. Is Skype is a pain in our beep, and so it is Wieners. time to try other things. Yeah. <laughs> He had to just take it to wieners. Uh, so we're trying new stuff. Minute after I said so, it. so please, by all means. And by the way, this isn't going to affect the podcast. You know what I mean? Uh, well, I know, knock on wood, this isn't going to affect the podcast. But those of you watching Troy live, can't hear the let laughter, us know. I, <laughs> I can no longer hear the laughter. I can't but I, hear I, the I saw somebody. Uh, I. <laughs> I saw somebody say that Troy was a little quiet, so we, we work on that. So please let us know if uh, if there's anything wrong yeah. on the levels, because we're live. We need you guys to let us know. Thank you. Yeah. No, the thing that makes it so that we'll never use this again is that there is a definite delay, and it uh, it sucks. Um, but that's okay, because we're still going to have fun. Um, I'm just not going to listen to you guys. I'm just going to watch your mouths move instead. Uh, Matthew, how are you? I haven't seen you since Atlanta. <laughs> Wait, were you there? I have no idea what you're I'll talking about. I'll just wait. Yeah, there's... For, for I have no, no clue what you're us. talking about. <laughs> Huge delay. <laughs> Put your what? image, because you have your own image. Put your image for your private oh. viewing over your face in the broadcast. Did you not do that? I'm doing Maybe that. that will help. I'm doing you. that. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. Well, I, I yeah. just want to say this. I, this sounds like a Troy internet problem, because everybody looks good yeah. to me, and, and they all I've sound... Got I've got files, and it's plugged directly in. <laughs> Okay, I'm good. You did see me in Atlanta. We had we and you saw me in Nashville. Uh, mm. We were there together. We got pedicures together, even. Um, oh right, you was had that... to get the. Do... Oh God, go on. So that was uh, that was just a couple weeks ago. You know, as you get older, time moves faster. But then things that happened recently also seem like they happened a long time ago, because Atlanta and Nashville feel like forever ago. Yeah. Joe, are yeah. your shows still shiny? Are your toes still shiny from your pedicure? They actually are. Uh, I'm starting to worry about if they're ever going to not be shiny again. <laughs> but it's probably a good thing that they're super, super shiny. Uh, I was like, this is really fun. And then I was uh, wearing flip flops at a gathering of men eating meat. And uh, I felt pretty <laughs> awkward. It's like, I hope nobody looks at my toes. <laughs> These new friends in the neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs> that sentence I was wearing flip flops at a gathering of men eating meat feels like it's going to be the title of your autobiography <laughs> oh man but I loved the pedicure I gotta say holy smokes is that a good time that was we just... do it in Boston Troy <laughs> no 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 that's not gonna happen uh only because joe and i are flying in from vegas on saturday after two and a half days in vegas so um i imagine our dogs are going to be a little tired too tired to be rubbed by a stranger but that's exactly you, what it's for you are. what are you talking about my shoulders will be way too tired to get a shoulder massage <laughs> oh, i, I want to wake up i want to wake up on I'll sunday be far too and watch sick to see a doctor <laughs> I want to watch football straight up until we have to go on stage. Yeah, I'm going to show yeah up exactly. At, uh, Seven thirty, and just walk on stage. We should call them and so, ask yeah, them if we can do time sound time. check at ten a.m. just so that we can like do sound check and then just watch Dude, football until the moment the show starts. That is a fantastic idea. Um, <laughs> I'm going to have the eight o'clock. I will game see on you at laptop. four o'clock. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have the eight o'clock game on my laptop. <laughs> um, what, uh, Skid, how are you feeling? You've been, you've been sick for a uh, hundred days. Are you feeling better? Yeah, I am feeling better. Uh, this is, uh, almost, almost no fever today. So, so that's <gasps> awesome. Amazing. Dude. Yeah, this is, yeah, I'm so, uh, tired and stuff, but, uh, but yeah, I feel yeah. a lot better today than I even did yesterday. So. Yes. Good. Good. I mean, to have a fever every single day and then suddenly not have a fever, you must feel like you could fly. Yeah. Well, <laughs> it's the thing is like it would it would come and go. It would usually come around at like four o'clock in the afternoon like it would start. So it was just like I feel I wake up in the morning. It's like, oh, maybe I'm better today. And I was like, nope. But uh, so far today, like I'm, I'm still fine. So yeah, I feel pretty good. <laughs> good. <That was good. laughs> it is. It's so sad. It's so sad. It's, it's the worst. And, and for the record, yeah, Skid so has been today, recording 
GMing, recording, playing uh, basically every day this week, right? So he's, yeah. he's been, been a real trooper. Yeah. Busy. Is it been, it's been a busy old week. <laughs> at the actual play factory <laughs> no rest the way, for the weary uh, there i do i i want to get into something here because we had a discussion as we were warming up for this about the pronunciation of a certain japanese confection <laughs> how uh, why would you how would you okay, go ahead skid how would you say it how would you guys say it this is it this is what it is okay pocky pocky that's that's a reasonable thing to assume. It's a, Troy. a native English speaker reading it. You'd say that, sure. Matthew, I also would say Pocky. I once right. said okay, Pokey, but I was corrected and I felt right embarrassed about it. All right, let's get into this. All right, so <laughs> if you look, so you said that you heard on, on, the, on the website. <laughs> You look at the website. It's a, it's a, you say it says to say uh, Pocky, but if you look at the katakana, this here, the the first character there, that is the uh, Ho. That is a that is a character for Ho, H O, and with a little like a uh, uh, circle over there that that transforms it from an H to a P sound. So that's a Po. So a Po, and then you got the Tsu here, which means a double like uh, the consonant or whatever the next character is. So Pokey, Pokey. So perhaps uh, what in English it is meant to be Pocky, but when Japanese readers see it in katakana, they would say Pokey. So hopefully that says clears here everything on, up. Now, this is the American, the American website, but it is Pocky.com. I said Pocky right. because the first frequently right. asked question, perhaps the most frequently asked question is, how do I pronounce this? And where did the name originate? <laughs> And the answer mm. they provided is simple. It's like Rocky except with a P. The name Pocky or Pokey was inspired by the Japanese onomatopoeia for the snapping sound made while eating Pocky or Pokey stick. Pocky. Uh, Pokey. Well, that, Pocky. Pocky. That's Pocky. a fun story. Oh, but if you look here at the katakana <laughs> once again, I'm if really this story was correct. that I'm really glad that you guys are all so headstrong that you brought this up on air to argue with each other about because Matthew told Skid he was wrong and Skid you Skid you are just getting back at Matthew in in, in front of an audience. So you just, I just don't like, want I can't wait till anyone we go live. spreading any misinformation <laughs> because if I hadn't corrected this, I could have forgotten. And if I had <laughs> let that go, he could be off telling his student. He's a, the man's a teacher for God's sake. He could be telling people <laughs> misinformation for years to come and a teacher. So I felt it was my my civic duty to to do this now in this forum. You're a good so now, man. Now Skid. hopefully that good clears man. everything up. For the record, Public I also service. was corrected by Skid off air. So <laughs> <laughs> it, did have, it, it was a double. It didn't correction. go both ways. <laughs> but I feel that public shaming will often make a lesson stick in ways that a private shaming will not. So mm. that's the lesson I'm going to impart to my students next week. <laughs> The man is a know. teacher for God's sake. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what the hell's going on. Um, <laughs> uh, but uh, uh, Joe, you're good. Good. We'll move on. Um, eight, eight seconds later, you laugh. I'm going to kill myself. This is so unusable. Um, all right. Let's do a quick 45 minutes uh, here. What happened in Atlanta? <laughs> Skid, we missed you. That's the first thing that happened, but I like that you were uh, available via text. That was fun. Um, that was awesome. And those, That was awesome. Those texts, uh, the response was immediate, unlike um, you guys' response to me now. Uh, but in Atlanta, uh, you guys, uh, a couple of you died in the dreamlands uh, because you were uh, searching for your thoughts third out of seven uh, Dreamland gifts to uh, hopefully present to the Mad Poet. Once you get them all, you're going to do the Dreamland ritual and go back to the Forsaken Caravanserai and uh, meet with the Yellow King who will lead you to the Mad Poet. You have three of those things now. The third one you obtained in Atlanta, the Skull of Ghoul Royalty. I just, I love the idea you that found we it obtained in it in Atlanta. 
<laughs> it's like that. That's where the the heroes delved into the depths of Atlanta, Georgia. <laughs> Outside the Georgia Dome was a skull of gold royalty. Um, that, all, that also would mean we got the part the Parg's tales in Indianapolis. Right. <laughs> this is very very funny to me. They were selling the Mad Gen Con on the exhibition floor. Uh, you you found yourselves uh, during this Dreamland excursion ritual in a necropolis somewhere, an underground necropolis with a bunch of ghouls, uh, particularly Lang ghouls, which are a more mm. uh, intense kind of, they almost look more canine in appearance type ghoul. Um, but the ghouls of the Dreamlands in general, Lang ghoul or regular ghoul, are more, for lack of a better word, civilized. They, uh, they're, they're still grotesque and horrible and uh, vicious, but uh, they're more civilized and can converse with you uh, differently than the ghouls that you ran into, for example, in Briarstone Asylum. So mm -hmm. they think that you're there because some of the lesser ghouls have been praying to Nyarlathotep to bring them aid in this battle that they have ahead because they used to live in this necropolis. They abandoned it as their civilization grew, but they heard a group of gugs moved in, and that is a front, an affront to everything they believe in. So they wanted to go get these gugs out of there, uh, but they needed help with this one little area. You four arrived, well, not Aldo, but Xantar, along with Ave Maria, Sir Julie Andrews, and Atticus Grimm, arrived, decided to be the strike force team, fought a bone golem, and some other, uh, I think they were called Necrophidiuses. And then you walked in and you saw the mausoleum that held this uh, ghoul prince and you thought there's gonna be the ghoul skull we need. But you saw like a little movement behind the mausoleum and it was a fucking Gug. Now you've fought Gugs before, but you haven't fought two E-Gugs and you haven't fought two E-Gugs while you were seventh level. And so this Gug yeah, exactly. gave you a run for your money. What were we when we fought the Gugs before? Like 14th level? 16th maybe like endgame i mean endgame we pretty much mopped yeah. them up and so going into this i was like oh we got this it's just a gug but just then you realize that they are creatures <laughs> truly out of your worst nightmare and they are dare i say unbeatable <laughs> unbeatable <laughs> perhaps it i'm was, just going with my nasty. own personal opinion but <laughs> It was pretty nasty. It got out of hand fast, uh, and you quickly realize we just need to get in there, get that skull, do the 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 will save to try and wake up and get out of here. Try and get out of here alive. Problem is, the minute you opened the mausoleum, you unleashed a curse where these like cold, dead tendril hands came out and reached into your souls, and some of you got cursed. Who is cursed among you? Ave got cursed. Ave got cursed, Sir Julie got cursed, I think Xantar and Atticus came out okay. Honestly, though, Xantar might be cursed as well. Um, but uh, pretty nasty curse. I have, which I have does... no memory of that. Is that uh, part of the curse? <laughs> you might be cursed. That sounds like somebody was cursed to me. Uh, if we'll you've got go no memory the of the tomb, you might be cursed. You might be cursed. <laughs> you might be cursed. <laughs> well, the good that news joke, is... That joke the... was uh, Foxworthy. Oh, look at him. Look at him go! It's Thursday Night Live on the Glass Cannon Network. <laughs> the, uh, the curse only is active when you're in the dreamlands. So the next time you perform that dreamland excursion ritual, you're going to come there and be cursed. But in the material plane, that curse doesn't follow with you. Why do I know that? Because I emailed Ron Lundin to make sure. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> And I thanked him for that response 13 days later this morning while I was doing my prep. Um, <laughs> however, something that will carry uh, into the imperial plane uh, is is an effect to those of you who died to the gug, because this Santar and Ave. This is why I strongly considered not playing tonight. I was like, I'm just gonna just gonna sit this one out. Let me know what happens because. You told us many times in many green rooms, don't die in the dreamland. It's like, it is not. It, it's bad. It's bad. Is how you would keep saying it over and over again. And so we were trying not to. And I've been dreading this well, session because I don't want to find Joe, out what happens. We're, we all don't even to... start. <laughs> don't Some even choices start. were made. 
It yes, seemed like choices wanted which to be would cursed. have seemed brilliant should a die roll go your way. But sometimes it doesn't, Matthew. <laughs> That's the game we play. Matthew, you want to play back for me um, the end of the episode? Uh, in, in your own words, what occurred? You know what? Uh, sure. So Jared, <laughs> as, as Xantar, King of the Zoogs, uh, quickly realized what we needed to do was retrieve the idol and wake up, as you said. Xantar ran in, grabbed the idol, woke himself up. Ave Maria, keyed into the strategy, tried to buy a little time, but then woke up as well. Uh, Sir Julie volunteered to sacrifice herself to let everyone else get away and hold off the hold off the gug. And then for some reason, uh, Atticus decided to stick around and then stick around some more. And then <laughs> on a turn oh. we, we, on a turn oh. where he could have just woken up, <laughs> he decided to cast fly on himself and fly away. <laughs> whereupon he was hit with an attack of opportunity from the gug and died. Now That's how I remember it. Let me let me explain the actual course of events. Everyone tried to wake up, as did Atticus, and failed the roll. So now he's stuck there. The creature is wailing on him. It is going to kill him if he fails this next wake up roll. But on the off chance the creature doesn't have an attack of opportunity, it might not. If he casts fly, which is not a die roll, he has no chance of failing because he can just fly until he wakes up and this creature's not gonna get him. So. He tried to wake up, failed the roll, and then that damn attack of opportunity. I didn't know he had it. If I would have known, I wouldn't have done it. But here we are. I was setting up a future uh, where I could fail more. That's all. That's all. Oh, and then well, Matthew goes, all right, well, roll the die and see if you would have woken up. And it was like, Natty 17. Like, of course it was, Matthew. When it doesn't matter, <laughs> when it doesn't fucking count, that's when I rolled Natty only, 17. It was only the most funny, it was the funniest choice you could have made because Matthew in character literally said, fly, you fool. And yeah. then you did it. <laughs> that's why I did it. I thought it was a fun story moment. I was like, man, he's like, you want to realize how cool I am? And then it it backfired, <laughs> as, as so many things do for me in Pathfinder. It is a, a, a tale of constant backfiring. Now I I've <laughs> forgotten, but what was the DC to wake up? It wasn't uh, particularly um, high. You just rolled exceedingly I poorly. Say, the first time, right? I want to say twenty five, but I have to look. No, it up. it's twenty five. Um, I mean, it's like a twelve or higher on the die. Like it is, it's no joke. Over high uh, on the die. Okay, so it's. Yes, 11 or higher on the die for me. So it's a, it's a coin flip. So 50 50 it's, chance. It's... Correct. The coin flip. Yeah, well, it was hilarious. The, I think the funniest part about it is we've talked now several times backstage uh, during shows that, like, you, you have to think of this game differently and that so few creatures and heroes have attacks of opportunity. And I think this was the first one that had one. So otherwise, <laughs> you fly away and you're a genius. <laughs> Um, but instead, it's in just in every iteration of this, <laughs> I'm a genius except this die roll. God damn die except, except the reality. The one, <laughs> except the one that occurs in reality. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, except, except the one that occurs in hindsight when you know everything. Yes, agree. <laughs> well, here's what happens. You all, uh, well, I shouldn't say all. Santa and Ave use the uh, the the ability to awaken, the awaken action. Um, and you woke up on the boat. Santar, Ave, you, you look at each other um, and you see uh, Aldo sitting in the corner. Uh, if you remember, Aldo ha was experiencing some stomach issues um, that then turned into scurvy. Um, but uh, he's sitting in the corner, um, sort of half asleep, we'll say, um, just trying to get some rest because it's been a long day of gross things um, happening to his body. And then Sir Julie and Atticus begin to come to. And what happens when you die in the dreamlands, you don't actually die, but a piece of you is almost ripped out and left there. And so when you return to the material plane, your mind is just not right. And should you die again, things get even worse. However, in the meantime, let's start with Sir Julie. Sir Julie, 
you are going to be given a lesser madness of melancholia. Oh no. Oh wow. You will take a uh, a minus two penalty on initiative checks and all your morale bonuses are halved. I don't know, are morale bonuses still a thing in 2E? Because I'm translating this well, from- uh, Clearly they are. Oh, 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 I see what you're saying. These haven't been uh, converted over, so I can't remember. Um, I have I have no idea, but I'll look I'll look okay. for my uh, so minus, minus two, two to initiative. And, yeah, and, ha and, and all uh, morale bonuses are half. Yes, but we'll look into that. If it, if there are morale bonuses, we'll have to find something equivalent. A character, more importantly, is how you're going to play this. A character suffering from melancholia struggles with severe pessimism and can often be slow to respond to threats and events going on around her, thus minus two to initiative. She can seem quiet and withdrawn and her sense of enthusiasm is dulled. In extreme cases, a character suffering from melancholia becomes entirely introverted and utterly withdrawn, even to the point of near catatonia. <laughs> What a terrible... Seems like it should be more than a minus two if it's catatonia. No, um, no, it's, it's not that I'm advocating. Approach that. It can approach that. It, it, it's yes. in some extreme cases. It's not every case. Yes. And this is All how right. it would approach that, Matthew. Um, these madnesses, at least in first edition, it took a long time. It ta Every week you roll a check to see if you slowly get better. But if it starts to take too long, you could enter a full catatonic state, and should you die again in the dream, oh. who knows what's going to happen? Um, you do. I, we you know, and you're not you, telling. You, I do. You know, <laughs> and I'm not going to tell you. Uh, according to Dragon Rider J, uh, morale bonuses are not a thing in 2E. So uh, I meant to look that up today, but then I got busy um, playing NBA 2K23. But that's not important. I. Um... <laughs> <laughs> that was good. <laughs> How is that? Trick. How is that game? <laughs> you know, the last time I played NBA, uh, any of the 2K games, was at our first PAX East, when the the, the famous story when you oh, created we, all we of these the draft. teams. Yeah, right. I haven't played. And then before that, I think it was Double Dribble was the last time I played a basketball game. <laughs> but I had a wild a hair, and too. I was like... Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, uh, I'll, find, I'll find an equivalent. Minus two to initiative is pretty brutal um, in second edition. But let's talk about Atticus. Think about you get into character here. What is that? How does that melancholia land? Don't be silly. Really let it land. Now, Joe. Joe, you're going to have uh, something quite different. Uh, your lesser madness is going to be a delusion. And what that delusion is, I just emailed to you so that it is secret. Between oh. you and I. <laughs> no, I'm gonna have to spoiler alert. Play things are gonna make Matthew angry. <laughs> spoiler alert. You're this. gonna hate it. <laughs> so wait, you hand pick these. So like you picked the one that I would hate the most. There's a table. There's a table. And you rolled on it, or you picked the worst. It's, it's possible that I did. Yes. Is that your reaction to reading the email or your reaction to just know, knowing there is an email that you have to read? Because I sometimes have that reaction when I see that an email from that, Troy comes in. That's, that is the reaction to just seeing Troy Lavalle in my inbox. Like just seeing the name. Yeah. 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 I get that a lot. I get that a lot. Oh, no. Uh, no, I read the email. Uh, I hate it. I hate it. <laughs> yeah. It's bad. I had I to make it. it bad. Yeah. But hey. It's up to you how you play it, or don't it's, play it. It's now, up here's to me how I play it. Okay, all right, great, great. <laughs> so this is what he does. It's like <laughs> this is what he does. He made it. The, he made this up. He made this up. And so what he did was he found a way to make something up that's going to make the entire viewership and listenership of our show hate me as a person. That's going to be the result of this. So just wait. Just wait. He's just and he's going to revel in it. He's going to revel in it. I'm getting excited just, just as you're reacting now. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, now, here's a little caveat. This madness does not occur when you go back to the dreamlands. 
So whereas oh. your curses stay active in the dreamlands, uh, unless you cast remove curse in the dreamlands, uh, or any items you find only exist in the dreamlands, uh, your madness goes away because it's almost like that piece of you that has been torn out returns while you're in the dreamlands, but then goes away again when you return to the waking world. Um, That's really cool. But every week, you will roll to see if you get a little better. Okay, all right. In the meantime, okay. let's go to the boat real quick because I had some fun this morning and I said, I need to put everybody on the boat who is on the boat. Everybody get on the Boys. boat. So let's Wait, see if you I mean everybody is pancake I mean, bear and wet knees and when I say everybody, I mean everybody. Please direct your attention to roll twenty and you will see everybody. Oh, <laughs> oh cool new uh, boat map. Yep. Uh, oh, our good oh, buddy if new... you missed the Nashville show. Yeah, this is a new uh, map of the Cell and Starling from our good buddy Dave M, who has been upgrading our uh, maps. But there's everybody. There's Skywin, Pedro Alakabam, uh, <laughs> Fingers O'Toole, Fanny enough. Kreminger, Dinky Fuss Tumble, Porkchop McIntyre, <laughs> uh, Spinny Pow, and then all, uh, and of course, uh, Rebin and Gossa, the two older people who I've just oh, yeah, and Gossa. decided just not to be interested in. Hmm. And then um, I made a I list of I, back- I didn't. I... Matthew, come on. <laughs> I was just going to point out you missed one. Who'd I miss? Tiny, Mur Tiny Murder Clown is nowhere to be seen. Tiny Murder Clown, Tiny Murder Clown uh, got off the boat. Jumped off the boat and went into uh, Razmir. Were you not at that oh, show? He's going to Razmir. Yeah, we. Yeah, uh, I'm sorry, sure Matthew. Did. Do you not remember my entrance into the game? Me and Tiny Murder Clown high fived as we switched places. You don't remember this? <laughs> yeah, it was the whole thing. I didn't. I forgot the high five as well. Mm. I went and watched the Nashville show today just to get these names. Uh, the other people who are now aboard your <laughs> boat are the Edge Lord who is a captain of the sh ship called Party Time. <laughs> and then there's Finger Lakes, Mrs. Fantastic, Basement Betty, Pancake, Chocolate Chip, Wedgie One and Wedgie Two, The Truth, Simple Syrup, Dimples, Dead Tooth, Wet Knees, Scallywag, and O.J. Simpson. <laughs> and if you look closely, you'll see O.J. Simpson is spelled S-Y-M-P-S-O-N. He's, he's standing next oh, to Sky. Okay. That's good. Uh -huh. Legally We've really struck him from... Uh... Right. A legally yeah. distinct the character. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he, he this and Skywind is... Have... <laughs> <laughs> this is so dumb. Uh, but here's the thing. Uh, you have to imagine that on top of your uh, fatigue and your unsteady mental state, I'm talking specifically to Sir Julie and Atticus, the fact that there are now 15 more people crowding this very small ship could raise tensions a bit. Um, so keep that in mind. Uh, it's very uncomfortable. It stinks. There's like people are shitting off the side of the boat. Uh, I mean, it's 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 bad. And also, food stores are running low as well. Um, what's everybody doing? Let's just catch up with you guys a little bit. Aldo, we haven't seen you. How are you feeling? Uh, Al was feeling much better. Like he just gives a big smile, like blood pouring down from his gums. I'm feeling great. <laughs> I was in bad shape, but now I'm like, feeling much better. <laughs> Class classic scurvy. <laughs> Atticus Are comes they, up to uh, him. Yeah. He's looking around, and he seems out of sorts. He's under some sort of delusion about the reality of this world that he's in now. He comes up to Aldo. He just says, Aldo, we... We needed you in there. We needed you. Oh, it's not enough. Oh, no, you went without me. Oh, no. I was so out of it, I didn't even know if you were going to go... Well, I don't know what was it. I know. Oh, I won't no. do the ritual again. I won't do it again without you. When I yeah, tried no, to no, run no. it myself the way you had done, it didn't work out so well. For days, you experienced non-stop diarrhea while I was unable yeah, to... Yeah, I know. Well, it was no picnic ritual. on this side of the dreamlands either. I'll let you know that. But uh, I am sorry that I wasn't there to, to help you. Oh, dear. But well, I'm glad yeah, you're well, feeling well. I'm feeling much better, so I'll be there uh, next time. He puts a hand on his little rat shoulder. Fit as, fit as a fiddle. 
Atticus looks at him kind of suspiciously and is thinking, what? How could someone be sick for that long? How could they... How could they claim to be that sick for that long? Was it too specifically <laughs> not to be involved in the ritual? Well, if you look at Was him, like, he's clearly to set not me on the feeling gun. well. No, <laughs> he's written... Yeah, oh, exactly. Okay, but if you do, if you do look at him, like, he does have, like, blood. Like, his mouth is full of blood. And, Bleeding gum. Like, he's spent, like, little... Yeah, little bits of blood are, like, being spit onto your face as he's talking to you. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> Uh, but I then I think Atticus, <laughs> I think Atticus is going to descend below, and is going to pour back into the books, uh, and he's looking for something. He's looking for an explanation for something that he didn't see before this last dream. And you see that the next item on your list is a green stone idol of a water lizard, uh, and then after that three more items you're kind of at that midway point um so far so good what about ave maria ave you and xantar woke up first and there was this like delay and you probably don't know what happened you just saw the gug mauling but then your friends wake up you're new even to this dreamland excursion ritual, so I don't know how much they've even shared to you about how this all works, and they're still discovering it as well. Yeah, I think Ave wakes up very panicked. I mean, she didn't want to leave Sir Julie. She didn't understand what was going to happen, and they explained some of it, but not all of it. And she didn't know, you know, if you die, what happens, and if you're cursed, like all these things that we're discovering also as players, but... Um, and I think as soon as they wake back up, she runs to Sir Julie and to Atticus uh, and starts praying over them uh, and calling on Saren Ray to, to help them, even though presumably they wake up with no injuries, right? Yeah. I mean, no, they look physical. Right. right. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think now she's calmed down a bit and she understands more of what's going on with the Dreamlands, but she is very concerned with everybody on this boat. Um, and presently, if you look around, Ave is going up to Wedgie 1, Wedgie 2, Dinky, <laughs> the Edge Lord, Spinny. Um, and she is uh, saying, <laughs> just saying prayers uh, for all of them. Uh, and uh, if you listen in, uh, she's just saying, I shared with you the radiance of the Everlight and the compassion of the Dawnflower. And she kind of like presses their forehead as if she's like giving communion or something. She goes on to the next person. I share with you the, resi- the radiance of the Everlight and the compassion of the Dawnflower. She presses them on the head. Um, and she's trying to keep morale high on the boat because she's very nervous. She has no fucking idea what she got herself into. But she's keeping her faith, uh, looking at Skywind every so often like, is this how it normally is? Is this how these guys normally are? <laughs> and she's trusting in Skywin because Skywin's a halfling. So she's like, oh, you, you drinking? They drink a lot. <laughs> what she says to you. <laughs> um, All right. Yeah, Skywin, uh, this is not a uh, good position for her to be in either, but, you know, it just shows you the sort of the strength of her character here that she would even take on all these people from the tribute taker a lesser person would have just sunk them with the boat um but it's made things uh, really uncomfortable uh what about sir julie sir julie you wake up a little sad julie hasn't felt this way <laughs> quite some time so she's going to kind of wander around, like, uh, I would say wander around the boat, but really that's going to be squeezing through the what tight space she can find on the deck. Um, and like, can I check in with Re- Rebin and Gasa? We haven't, we, I think oh, she sure. really once tried to en- engage them in an orgy, but <laughs> then that was about <laughs> the end of that. <laughs> oh, hello there, young lady. Um, I have, we've barely spoken these last 42 days on the boat. You look rather <laughs> melancholy. Says yes. Revan. What is the point of speaking? 
when the entire world as you know it is collapsing in on yourself. Have you ever felt that way? The most uh, peculiar every, feeling. Every morning I wake up, I assume it will be my last, but we must continue to speak, for in speaking, others around us will learn. What have you learned recently, scholar? Well, I've learned that um, if you have 28 people shitting over the side of a boat, <laughs> it's very hard to fish. Most wise pronouncement. Yes. Tell me. I've never been a, a bit of a. I've never been a seaman. I'm more of a scholar. Didn't know that. <laughs> Thought it might act as some sort of chum. In fact, it has the opposite effect. <laughs> yes. Tell me, seaman. Would you like to feel something? My lady, I don't know where you're going with this, but I'm still <laughs> in. <laughs> but I'm still in. <laughs> 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 I just cannot shake cannot shake the sensation that if I don't try my absolute hardest I will be overtaken by these feelings of portentous doom so perhaps we could get it on and then maybe that would sate us for a little while not to make my intentions too plain milady let me get this straight you're feeling sad. Yes. And you think that um, having carnal relations with me, a stranger, would cheer you up? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, Sir Knight. But it can't just be you. So you're your oh. associate as well. <laughs> Gossa as well! <laughs> yes, of course. Do you think hold I would on. submit hold myself? Hold on, just one moment, your... Sir Knight. Let me sp <laughs> hold on. <laughs> and then he comes back. She's in. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. oh, wow! All right, Matthew, I you would kind say of painted us into a corner here. All right, I also, Matthew, say, you're on a invite. boat full of people. There's so many people on this boat and nowhere to go. Is this what you're we doing? We paid for a cabin. The point, Abe, is this to is below decks. something this I have. This is the show Below Decks. It's exactly what happens oh. on every season of that show. Yes. The point is to experiencing something I would otherwise not experience in hopes that I might reach a bit of feeling. But I find May I do not have light guide you. <laughs> I shall say my normal prayers before we begin. Do as you must. All right, whatever. He's already naked. <laughs> <laughs> and then we can cut away and we'll come back later. All right. Um, all right. But let's play it all out. You were nervous uh, there that I was going to keep Yeah, you don't want to do like a Game of Thrones style, extended. Yeah, I'm trying to picture like, oh, where are they everything's cut away? going and how. <laughs> um, you guys have fun with it in your imaginations. Sir Julie then has sex with both Rebin and Gossa in their private chamber <laughs> that they paid for. Um, and let it lust be known. Let it be known that Sir Julie, even under the conditions of melancholia, is still an excellent lover. <laughs> Very attentive. <sighs> the power so of ceremony <laughs> flows through her. <laughs> yes, as does the power of Rebin's thrusts. Now, so front door. a couple days pass, and uh, there's a lot of talk on the ship as to what went on in that. <laughs> there's a little pokey pokey went on. In it was the, a little uh, pocky. Private cabin. A little pocky in the cabin. <laughs> um, <laughs> and uh, you hear the, uh, the lookout. I think it's Dinky Fuss Tumble. It's like, there's a, a, a boat, boat ahead, boat. And, uh, you know, maybe some of you come on, on deck. Um, 
the rest of the uh, people are downstairs, so I, I imagine you're probably spending most of your time uh, above deck because <laughs> uh, the Edge Lord and all his friends are, are mostly downstairs, and the crew are busy working the boat. So, if you want any fresh air, you've got to come up there. And uh, you come up, and you see them kind of scurrying about, and Skywin is just like standing at the uh, head of the boat, just looking out there. One of you walk up to her. Who wants to walk up to her? Yeah, I'll sure. Like, uh, Sir, Sir Julie right, will so emerge from. We we charge her. Right, all right. You all charge her. Charge. Charge. <laughs> we knock the, her over. The video board. delay. The video delay was per- perfect timing for like all of you to not want to do it and then all agree to do it at the same time and it just overlaps. Yeah. Uh, all right, so you come up to her. And she says, uh, uh, Dinky saw a boat up ahead. Um, it's a small boat. Uh, looks like there's four people on there, two men and two women. Um, they're, they're waving for help. Uh, and you look out there and you see, and it's a tiny little boat compared to the Sullen Starling, which isn't a very large keel boat. This is like slightly bigger than a dinghy. Uh, and it has, it looks like two uh, men and two women, fishermen, dressed like fishermen, uh, with uh, poles in the water. Um, and they're just like, help, help. Um, yes, yes. She's like, cry for help. Cry against the, the mighty weight that this, of the burdens the world has placed upon you. Sir Julie. Julie yeah. Atticus yeah. slowly oh, turns right. to Sir Julie. <laughs> It's not like her. Very strange. I, I uh, these people are flailing help, help about them. in the water, drowning? No, they're standing on their boat, like, waving for help. Oh. What is the situation? Well, I... We've got a hole in our boat! It's small, but we're not going to be able to make it back to shore! Can, can you help us? How many of you are there? There's just four! Just the four of us! And we can see off. I don't know, mate! It, it's sort of I arse guess... elbows at this, on this side. Uh, Aldo! We have to help them! What are you talking about? There's Please. literally no room Please. on the deck! There's not a free not fire only is there for them to even stand in! Their bo- we could help them patch their boat! What's wrong with you? What's wrong with I you? Really I just swim. don't want any more people on Captain. this deck. Captain! Saddle up next to them. I'm, I'm sure we could help them patch their boat. Hold on, just a moment. Hope you don't mind getting cholera. Relay that order, Captain. Ave Maria, you are new on this ship, and you will know your place. We could be walking right into a trap. I cannot have you setting up all of these innocent people for death because you do not have the mind to think about what happens in these waters off the coast of Lesmiran. Excuse death will come me. For us all. The only reason all. that these people are on this boat is because I helped you. I paid my dues just like you to travel on the ship for Captain Skywind. Oh, so did if anyone you? has anything oh, to say, then she will make the decisions. And where did you get that money? Pardon you know? me? That's what I thought. I'm a cleric of Saren Ray, and I made my money by preaching. People pay just to hear you. You talk. Faithful people. People with a will to live and a want to live. Yes. And she looks at Sir Julie. Faithful. Faithful people yes. whose money you're happy taking away from them. Interesting. Atticus, allow her to prove it. Ave. I would be in, I'd very much be in need of a bit of the goddess's light. Would you mind preaching for us for a moment? I think it would do us and also, as well as the people who are drowning. I'm good. <laughs> Atticus is looking at these people. What does he exactly see? It's are they human? Filling up! Uh, looks like uh, maybe two elves and uh, two humans. Um, one elf, woman, and man. One elf, uh, excuse me, one human, woman, and man. And they're, they're just waving. They have these long poles in, um, but you do see uh, there is some water in the boat. And they're like, please, we, we can't swim. And, and Skywin says, listen, all three of you, just stop with the bickering. I understand it's cramped quarters here, but I can't just let these people drown. Um, uh, 
Well, just, there's a, there's a town coming up, uh, Riverton. I meant to stop there anyway. It's not my favorite place, but, um, we can just, we can bring them to shore and, uh, and leave them there. And, uh, you know, that should be fine. I can't leave the rest of these people there, but, um, they're most likely from Riverton. Uh, does anyone have any objections? Captain, Look upon I him or her with be... eyes of mercy. Oh, Everlight, may you rest your healing hand upon them. Yes, That's Captain. I'm, agree I'm in agreement. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I think I heard some of that. All right, <laughs> then. We'll move closely. And we'll, uh... We'll, we'll, we'll let them aboard. Uh, we'll question them first, obviously. Um, so you, you sail in close uh, to the boat. And, and he's questioning the them as we're as we're sailing in. Atticus is what questioning them as we're sailing. How did how did the damage come about your boat? We don't know. We, we, don't know. we, we, we must have hit a, a rock or something. A big stiff rock or, or there could have been a creature. I don't know. It's, like I said, it's not a huge hole, but we, we're not going to be able to get to shore. Have you no experience sailing? We're fishermen. Did, I mean, we, 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 we normally don't go very far. And does it look like Please. there's fishing gear, like, uh, in the boat that we can see? Roll a... Uh, does it look like a fishing gear. boat? Uh, uh, it definitely okay. looks like a fishing boat, yeah. Oh, that's good. Can I roll as well? Um, that is a 27. What is the name of your boat? Uh, the... Party the, time. The river, the river Queen. Party time. <laughs> <laughs> the River <laughs> Queen. <laughs> It's the river so queen. Julie turns to the others and says, he hesitated when he answered. He might be lying. <laughs> Perhaps we should approach them as hostile. Aldo, uh, I'll tell you bombs. Their boat is named River Queen. Obviously, they're from Riverton. We should just let them on the boat. Um, yes. I heard so, that. That's so very we... kind. You shut up. Did I? We're <laughs> <laughs> getting closer uh, and closer look like and closer to the boat. They're fishing. You see stuff in the boat. It's hard to tell if it's fishing equipment or not. Like, it doesn't look like... You don't see poles and whatnot. Um, but All you right. do see stuff in the boat. I think Ave would draw her scimitar. She's not stupid. She's fighting with Atticus, but she's not stupid. And she holds it up, uh, and she says, We are a boat full of armed mercenaries. We're not afraid. If you have anything to say, say it now, or we'll let you aboard and bring you to Riverton. Okay. Um, and so you, you pull up right next to the boat, and... Uh, yes, Atticus? Atticus. Atticus is going to exploration mode, detect magic. He's going to, like, constantly okay. detect magic to see if there's any strange magic emanating off of them or the boat. Um... Okay. You go to detect If they're just magic. fishermen, there's probably no magic items on them. Yeah, Unless they they're look like fishermen. And they're they're dressed the fish like fishermen. Magic. However, as you do this display to detect magic, you detect magic on all of their persons, like an aura of magic around their body. Hmm. Hmm. Um, and I... Sorry. Yeah. No good. I'd like to try to identify it. Um, at least insofar as, like, is it just magical armor, or is there, like, a, a small magical item that they're carrying, or are they, as people, emanating magic? Like, is it localized okay. sort of to their... Yeah. Their torso, or is it, like, their whole body is emanating magic? So you want to... Um like heighten that to third level to learn the school of magic uh that would be more of a combat thing um yeah i'm looking at like the tech magic for 2e and it works a little bit differently um you receive no information beyond the presence or absence of magic so i actually already told you too much um uh, no that's but, not true it's a cantrip it's a cantrip so it's automatically heightened to my level so it's, it's ah, automatically okay. for heightened heightened fourth uh, I can pinpoint the highest level. I can detect multiple Johns, right? Okay. Chat, is that right? 
Like for an imprecise, imprecise sense, you don't learn the exact location, but can narrow down the source between uh, to the to within a five foot cube uh, or nearest. Well, here's the thing: you're 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 sensing four distinct auras near their person. And uh, careful, they are emanating magic. You can sense it. And you get closer um, and closer. Hmm. Ask them about it. Uh, oh, okay. Um. You there, the one who was like doing all the speaking. Why, uh, what me? is on you? What is magical on your person? For a fisherman, you seem to have something quite valuable about all of you. We are, we are but simple fisher folk. And so you have no What's magical items on you. And so you have no magical items on you. And they start looking at each other and looking at you and looking at each other again, and they all, in unison, yell, ALL HAIL THE WATER RAT! <laughs> See? Whoa. This is what happens. Roll what for is the water rat? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> I love it, they're oh, looking man. at each other, looking at me, looking at each other, looking at me. <laughs> they're asking too many questions! This? It's the OK all Corral. ALL HAIL THE WATER RAT! <laughs> <laughs> oh, all HAIL no, THE WATER Rick RAT! Roll. Giggity, uh, giggity, I don't know goo. how this works. I don't know how this works in 2E, but detecting magic is Initiative? an exploration activity. Is it oh. yeah, is it possible that I could use something other than perception for initiative on that? Like um, an arcana or is it just uh Oh yeah. perception. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean it's in the spirit of the game, it's probably still perception, but use arcana. Let's have some fun. Yeah, I feel like I could argue for it cuz I think in the spirit of this situation, his initiative is up specifically because of his arcane knowledge. Focusing on You know on what magic. I mean? Like, yeah. he, knew he knew that they, that something dangerous was here. So Honestly, I'm sure there'd be people, people who disagree with it, but I, I like it, so let's let's go with it. Dragon um, Rider Aldo, J says, roll? roll Arcana for initiative, hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, right. well, I trust oh, Dragon yeah. Rider J. Yeah. I believe it's Dragon Rider J. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay, Aldo, what'd you get for a niche? Uh, I got a 21 for initiative. 21 for initiative. Atticus. 34. 34. I happen to roll really well. Rolled really Ave Maria. 24. 24. And Sir Julie, with your minus two. 20. Oh, yeah. Yes. Come, come. We shall slay you like all the others we have slain. Surely, <laughs> at some point, our enemies would learn, but no, of course not. Come. Come onto my blade. <laughs> I'm going to reveal a new map for you. Uh, please Ooh. refer to roll 20. Oh, phenomenal. God, oh, these oh, maps, yeah. these new maps. Wow. Oh. Look at the water. I mean, I love it. Yeah, that's great. Where did really, everyone go? I yes. really don't want to. Oh, dear. They're below deck. They're all having a party. <laughs> yeah, everyone ran below Without deck, and, and they're of course. They're starting to panic when they heard all here the water rat. There's like a big hubbub, so Skywin and the crew are trying to like control everybody. Um, it's going to be a four-on-four -four battle, and we're going to kick it off with Atticus Grimm, who used his Arcana. Uh, amazing! I my roll twenty is simply not working. I don't see any enemies. Uh, does everybody else see? Us and the enemies? Yeah. yeah. Uh, They're on the boat. Okay. Do you see the enemy? They're a little camouflaged. Oh, I'm sorry. Move I do over, see them. Move over yes. to the right. Yeah. Okay. Got it. I was just a little confusing. Okay. Great. Uh, Atticus is going to get the jump here, and he's just going to start this incantation, and he's going to, as soon as they do that chant, he is going to bring this waving, shimmering wall between the two ships. It all of a sudden wavers for a moment, and then our entire, not our entire ship, but like from our, um, uh, the, like the gunwale, basically, up for 10 feet, uh, it just goes invisible. And uh, so it's, it's called invisibility curtain. So basically they can see none of us. We just all vanish to them. Wait, really? And it's, yeah, oh, and cool. it's 60 feet wide. So it, it would cover like Whoa. the whole oh, wow. area between us. 
Awesome. Two can Joe. do magic games. Hell yeah. yeah. Joe, I know my Woo. my my uh, pronunciation expertise has been called into question on this show. I believe, that, but I believe that's pronounced gunnel. Gunnel. Uh, gun whale. You're, I think you're right. Yeah, gunnel. I thought the gunnel. Skid was has endorsed I, I my pronunciation. I thought the gunnel was just. I thought the gunnel was just what uneducated people called it. A gunnel. <laughs> well, well yeah, I don't gotta remember all those. <laughs> Mariners Toothless. back in the day, they weren't they weren't college graduates, they, and they didn't have a lot of time, so they dropped a lot Why didn't of syllables. They just... That's uh, um, yeah. So all right, so that yeah, so just, basically, you do this, um, and that's how many actions? That is three actions. Okay, um, you drop this wall, and and basically they can no longer see your boat. Is what you're telling me? Basically, yeah. I mean, they know it's there because it's only 10 feet, so they can sort of see, like, the bottom of the boat in the water. They know it's there, but they can't see. We are all completely, totally concealed to them. Unless they cross through the wall. Is it called invisibility curtain, you said? Yes, yeah. Unless they cross through the wall, yeah. Okay. Uh, and all of us can see all of them. Like, it's like a two-way mirror, basically. Or a one-way mirror. Oh, this is so wow. we can see all of them, cool. but they can't see us. Can right. objects uh, pass through it? Can projectiles or anything pass through it, or magic pass through yes, it? Yes, yes. And I'll just tell you, metagaming-wise, like as soon as you attack, it ends the effect. So it, it was really ah, just okay, kind of okay. basically to if they got had a jump on us and had anything ranged, we'd have a huge advantage uh, in initiative. So you know, if you didn't want to attack yet and wanted to wait and see what they would do, you could you know you could ready an action. But as soon as we attack, it ends the effect for everybody. Okay. Well, um, let's see here how you guys play it. It is Ave Maria's turn. Hey. Um, I think I am going to ready a fireball. Uh, and I'm going to wait until the wall falls. I'm just going to ready the action. And as soon as the wall falls, I'm going to cast the fireball. Uh, it's in a 20-foot purse, so let me see, just map-wise. Can you ready a, uh, a multi-action action in 2E? That's what I'm looking anymore? up right now, because I think that you can't, but I also don't you have know to spend, how to play yeah, Pathfinder. I think you have to spend two for a one-action thing. I think, that's, I think that's how it works. Oh. Is that a three-action spell, Fireball, or is it two? It's a two-action spell. So I think you can spend I, one I action to ready. Do one. I don't think you can. Oh, no, because okay. readying is well, two. Readying is two actions. You know what? So. To make it ah. within the to make it within the You're rules, right, and I will look this up off screen. I will just hold my action then in the order, uh, and that's it. Yeah, so that you, you don't interrupt. But you, yeah. 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 Ready does indeed take two actions. Um, yeah, so I knew it took two, for every, but I didn't know. For everything. So you can never ready a spell. That's interesting. I mean, it makes sense. It could if it was a one-action spell. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's all right, true. So that's you're true. gonna you're gonna hold. Um, it is Aldo's turn. Uh, Atticus has basically bought you right. time to like get your bearings. Yeah. yeah, yeah I mean, yeah. this would be great if they rolled all the higher initiative, but they didn't. They got some, of course. Right. Shitty fucking <laughs> use of a spell. Like never, ever, <laughs> ever, ever, ever can look cool. No. Ever. Whoa, I don't know. It looks it cool. a little no, it's paranoid. Poor Atticus. It's Joe. poor Atticus. He always just seems Excuse like me, I drew it. Sir Julie is supposed to be right. the one with melancholia, Joe. Not you. <laughs> <laughs> You're delusional. Right, a delusional. exactly. I'm delusional thinking I'm in, uh, a, a cool wizard. <laughs> okay, Aldo is going to come around uh, to their the, the starboard side of the craft. And... He's uh, gonna th gonna pull something off of his bandolier, and he's gonna say, "I hope your boat likes sulfuric acid." And he's gonna throw a bomb. Natural twenty. Oh, oh. my gracious goodness! Yes, Welcome kid. back, Mister Skidbar. Yeah. Holy shit! All right, that's gonna Welcome be a, back, a fan fan critical skid. Yeah, uh, that's okay. right. Fan critical. Critical. Where, which and one are you that throwing magic it at? Or ranged. Uh, that I think it's it's ranged. 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 Okay. 
And pick a city Actually, there, Actually, you know Skip. what? Uh, I'm gonna pick, um... Uh, Baton Rouge, Louisiana. <laughs> Baton Rouge! You've been to Baton Rouge? I think so. Is it nice? No. Is that where the Abita Brewery is? Oh, is it in Baton Abita. Rouge? That's real garbage. Maybe I'm okay. making that up. Skid. That's good beer. Uh, is it ranged or is it magic? That's in Covington. It's ranged. It's ranged. Here we go from Baton Rouge. Uh, all right, we've got Nate. Wait. Uh, okay. I lied. I haven't uh, been to Baton Rouge. Got, I'm sorry. <laughs> we've got Nate Jackson from Shreveport, Louisiana. The yeah, old Shreve. one to John. You hit your target so cleanly that it knocks them back, teetering. With your hands already on your weapon and their guard down, you take a second shot at them. Deal double damage. Oh. You may then freely Ooh. move up to five feet to reposition without spending an action or incurring attacks of opportunity. You can then make a second attack with the same attack bonus for normal damage. Okay. Pretty I... wild. Yeah, that's great. Should I do damage first for the initial? Yeah, so yeah, first let's it's do double damage. damage. All right, which okay, one are you attacking, so... Skid? The, if left uh, or right, the they're one, one, two, three, four. One furthest to the bow. One furthest to the front of the of their boat. Okay. Throwing at that one. Um, oh, actually, no. The one right behind that one. One in the yeah, second. Yeah, probably the best second one. one then the other guys will get splash. Yeah, yeah. So, all right. So that is double damage. So that's uh, that's. Two. All right, so that's six points of damage to that guy, and then two. I don't. I, I don't know if splash damage is multiplied for people that aren't the main target, but I'll say no. I don't believe so. So, yeah. yeah so that's uh, two points of acid damage to the guys on either side of him, that's and awesome. then he's going to have persistent damage, which will be doubled. And then I'm going to throw another acid bomb uh, on them. at that same uh, attack bonus. Okay, that's a 24. 24 to hit. 24 to hit is a hit. Okay, so that's three more points of damage, and he's going to have a very hard, bad time on his route. <laughs> okay, so this is, <laughs> this is just the like same the guy. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So you sizzle that that guy right uh, behind the guy up front, uh, and his two buzzy buddies also get a little hit. Do they take some splash on that second attack? Uh, yes, they also take an, an additional two points of splash damage on that. Okay. All right. Great. So you moved. And you attacked. You got a free attack. Was that a free? It didn't count as an action from the crew. Uh, right. So I'm going to throw one so more. Got, I'm going to. I'm going to throw a firebomb now. Oh uh, on yes. the guy behind Oh god. Him. We'll see. Uh, that's an 18 to hit. 18 to hit them? Yeah. It, um, yes. That's a miss. Okay. Oh. So it just it goes overboard. Splashes in the water. Okay. Yeah. And the invisibility wall a curtain goes away, yes? Correct. And now uh, Ave and so, yeah, is going to go. step back into the order. Yeah. Okay, Ave. Um, and I would like to cast Fireball, and she is going to cast it directly into the center of the boat. It has a 20-foot uh, burst, so she'll hit everybody regardless, but hit the entire boat as well, even though we know in 2E that the boat will not catch on fire from my Fireball spell, but she's going to do it anyway. You never know. a little behind um, them, so you don't hit, so you don't hit Aldo. Oh, yes, sorry. And I will put it one square behind on the boat so I don't hit Aldo. Thank you. Great. Max. Four reflex Thanks. saves? Uh, yes. I get reflex for half, right? Reflex. Yep, basic reflex. Uh, DC is 25. Be honest. Okay. Troy. First one, uh, critical fail. So that's double damage. Oh Second one. Oh, my yes. gosh. Second one, critical fail. So that's uh, double damage. Oh, my goodness. Third one, uh, would you say 25? Yeah. Okay, that's a regular fail. Uh, and then the that's last crazy. one, uh, regular <laughs> fail. So critical fail, critical fail, oh. regular, regular. Oh. This is so unbelievable. Really <laughs> this is so un... 
unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> so that is 20 points of damage, full damage. So the ones who take double will take 40. And the ones who oh. take the regular oh, will take wow. 20. Uh, wow. And as she does it, she just says, light the way for this one, my lady. And she, oh, fireball just ah. into the bed. She's not fucking around. Not oh, fucking and just, around. <laughs> you just see this fire explosion. If other boats are a mile away, they would see this explosion on the lake. Um, you still have one action left, yes? Or you had to move into position? No, she did no, not you move. Didn't move. Uh, no, she's gonna take, uh, she's gonna take, she's gonna move 10 feet back. Uh, and be okay. aligned with Atticus towards the uh, left side of the boat. And after she does that, she looks towards Atticus as like a, she gives him sort of like a, okay, you were right, kind of look, like kind of like a eyes wide. Uh, she even says, she goes, all right, you were right. Okay, I'm fighting him now and I hope you're happy. Atticus, can I move for free? Uh, Cause this is bothering me. Uh, am I behind a wall that I, I just can't see them at all? Yes. Because of yeah, that placement. Uh, that doesn't make any sense. So I'm going to move myself over here. It just doesn't make any yeah, sense. Yeah, I just like, kind of randomly right placed you. Right, that's exactly. Fine. So I just want to make sure that I I had line of sight and all that kind of stuff. That's yeah, that's fine. Um, um, would you respond to her? Uh, when she says you're right? Uh, no, yeah. he doesn't. He looks at her like sidelong. Um, and, and looks back at the enemies and he's just getting ready for his next spell. It is. Sergio Leister. Ah, uh, yes. Sorry, I'm slow to respond to the rats. Um, <laughs> well, I suppose I shall come over here and my blade in hand must we murder everyone we come into contact with? It's getting to be a bit much, really. Do you know how much death <laughs> I've seen anyway? Um, can I try to hop over onto their boat? Yes, you would be using the leap action, um, and you can leap up to 10 feet horizontally, uh, and it just costs you an action to do so. Great. Uh, I will do that. I will leap onto their boat, second action, and I will swing uh, standing half on the gu- one foot on the gunnel, uh, one foot on the plank that goes across, like that they sit on, I guess, for row, um, yep. which probably has a name that I don't know. Uh, and she'll take a swing at, I think this is number four. Uh, yes, this is number four. And as you get into the boat, you see that, like, there is no hole in the boat. They had just, it looks like they just poured a bunch of water in to make it look like there was a hole. Wow. Double liars. Double liars. <laughs> Double liars. They lied Double about their identity and about the hole in the boat. And, <laughs> which is what? There's t- I, I'm having a hard time deciding which lie was worse. I know. <laughs> worst part is the lying. <laughs> so like, I, I did not need to face your mendacity today. My mental state was fragile enough. Uh, and it's a 20 to hit. Uh, 20 to hit is a miss. Oh, oh I'm sorry. 21. Oh. 21. Also a miss, um, and uh, to the veil, this magic <laughs> that Aldo, uh, that Atticus uh, detected under them, was their sweet ass armor. Yeah, uh, they were disguised oh, as oh. Simple fisher folk. I knew so it. You jump over the boat like Errol Flynn and just cling. And you you hear that cling sound. Looks like they're just wearing homespun rags, but you hit armor, and it repels. And you your can tell sword. Yeah, you, and you can tell that doesn't happen. But you can tell that uh, she doesn't do it with quite the same uh, joie de vie. I don't know how to pronounce it French. Uh, that she used to. She doesn't have that same kind of Errol Je Wolf and Elan. Um, okay, yeah. She's Everything she does is sad. It is uh, these guys' turn. I'll hail the water rat! Um, Skid, let's deal with some persistent damage here. Well, actually, the one that goes first is the one that doesn't have any persistent damage. Um, so what he is going to do is he is going to move, then he's going to leap, and uh, as he's moving, he pulls his pole out of the water, 
and you see that it's not a rowing pole. In fact, it is a trident that they had upside down and hiding in the water. So he like oh. leaps across the boat with a trident and goes to strike Aldo with it. Um, thrice liars. Uh, oh. <laughs> yeah, a third lie. A third lie. <laughs> will, the, will, will the deception never end? Probably a miss with a 21 to hit. Uh, that is a miss. Excellent. Okay. Excellent. Excellent. Now it is number three's turn. Now this is one of the guys that took splash damage. So uh, Skid, you said he has persistent acid damage as well? No, only the one that I hit directly will get persistent damage. Ah, okay, then I will take off that little Jimmy John there. Okay, great. That one is going to uh, look in the direction of Atticus. No. Ave Maria. And he is going to... Boom! Casts a spell. Uh, give me a fortitude save, Ave Maria. Okay. That's going to be a 23. Okay, that is a pass. So you're just going to take regular damage for a pass. Right? Regular damage for a pass, no damage for a save. So this is going to be... I don't know what spell you're doing. Uh, no, I would dead, like to use... Word, I would like to use my reaction to recognize the spell. Ooh. Okay, and you just uh, know what it is? would like to attempt to know the spell. If it's second level or lower, I automatically know what it's the spell harm. is. It's the spell oh. it's harm. Okay. There's another cleric uh, but on I that still, boat. I still roll, so that's religion, right? Arm, arm would come under or occultism, religion or occultism, uh, probably. It's a divine. Uh, yeah, divine. yeah, so I'm gonna roll religion, uh, and I uh, fail. So uh, I just, I just, you roll still in case you get a critical success, because then you get a bonus to a saving throw against it. But um, I, I do identify it as arm. Okay, so this is some sort okay. of divine magic. You take four mm. points of damage with a regular, for a save against a basic fortitude. Um, so not great for that guy. Uh, and he's going to use his last action to move up right to the edge of the boat here. Um, now it is the one right next to Sir Julie, and he is going to use uh, Pathfinder 2E Channel Smite on you. Uh, where he will expend one of his prepared harm spells to make a melee strike. And if it hits, uh, this the harm damage is added to the strike's damage with the trident. So he pulls the trident out of the water behind him and just tries to bring it down right on Sir Julie's head. Uh, here we go. All right, that's gonna be a 24. That's a miss. <laughs> oh, oh, yes. God, that was oh, the best. Get out of here. <laughs> It all Shit. seems so futile, doesn't it? <laughs> doesn't it? <laughs> Makes you want to just give up and jump into the water. You might as well just go. <laughs> Be my guess. I'll, I'll let you go for it. He does his butt, too. Um, but what he does do is he... Uh, he kicks uh, a plank that's next to him. Uh, but I know it's gonna be too hard for everybody's placed here. Ah, fuck it, it'll be fun. All right, he's going to kick a. He's gonna kick a plank, and now everybody look to your left. Uh, let's see if I can do this real quickly. This is really just mainly because it's gonna be fun, I think. Uh, kick a plank. On. Just, Are you gonna just kick, looking. Kick a you'll, plank you'll see what I mean. There it is. <laughs> Which one? The the one. That Look directly to your Oh, I see. He <laughs> kicks the gangplank out oh, towards uh, the other boat. Yes. <laughs> see, that's that's what was confusing me because I saw our pawns through the blackness. I could see our names, but I was like, is there some sort of? Oh, glitch you could. Here? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's, yeah. That's yeah. But fault. but I could but I couldn't see uh, the boat. All I saw was our names. Uh, <laughs> now oh. you see that. 
Okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> All right. Oh, that is awesome. So Once somehow, again, so amazing maps. So somehow it maps. extends underneath Sir Julie's leg. Yeah, well, that's why I was like, should I do this? I'm like, ah, rule of fun. I'm going to do it. Uh, just so I can rule use of, this a map. Rule of show off the map guy's work. Right, that's, yeah. that's what the rule is. I've invoked this before. Uh, <laughs> it is the last guy's turn, but this is the guy, Skid, that has the persistent uh, acid kill him, damage. Kill him right now. Kill him right now, dude. Okay. He has taken a ton uh, of damage. He takes, he takes 19 points of acid damage. Oh, he's oh dead. My God. Oh, actually, I think it's at the end of his... I think it, it takes at the end of his turn. Um, it takes so, at the end yeah, of his turn. Do, do whatever you're gonna do, and then uh, and then you'll take the damage. Okay. Um, second here, just gonna move these guys around because I forgot they took damage. I want to make sure I keep myself honest. Okay. All right. So he. Mm, I want to do that channel smite again, but it's so hard to hit Sir Julie. Um, all right, he is going to... You know, I'll try it. It's worth trying. Um, so... Yeah, here we go. Sir Julie. Correct eye. Uh, I don't think so. 26. That is a miss. So Again. So close. Uh -huh. I encourage you. <laughs> accept that the world is against you, as it is us all, and just... End everything right now. <laughs> He's looking at you like you're the crazy one. Uh, <laughs> and he uh, slides to the back of the boat, and that's where he takes 19 points of damage. Yeah, 19 points of damage. And now he gets a DC 15 flat check to see if the condition ends or if it persists. Nice, kid. And I rolled a... F I rolled a 15 on the dot. <laughs> uh, okay. All right. yeah. so that's, that's, but that guy is shit. in bad shape. You see his skin is like melting from the acid and the fire all mixed together. Ah! Ah! Uh, and now it goes to the top of the next round and it is Atticus's turn. Um, okay, Atticus was looking across at this divine uh, caster and just eyeing him up, ready to take him down. But then all of a sudden his, his attention is diverted by this guy hobbling to the back and burning alive with this persistent damage. He's gonna to try to finish. Melting. It. One, two, three action. Magic missile. Oh yes. Uh, so three missiles are gonna fire over onto this dude. Let's see if I okay. can do it. Let's see if it's enough. That's Come a on, max. Buddy. That's not a max. Ooh. Ooh. And that's not a max. So it's 11. 11 points of damage. And he is still. Up. Damn! Oh no! But like teetering, oh, like he's teetering, teetering off the back of the boat. However, at oh, that man. moment, the but one me, but that his is persistent. Uh, I'm sorry, he didn't save on the persistent, right? He did. The no, flat he did. check. Yeah, I oh, rolled a 15 man. on he the did. flat check. Um, so yeah, I mean, an AOE would probably wipe him out at this point, but he looks in really bad shape. However, when you harm oh. that one. The, the one that is about 10 feet away from Sir Julie, right here uh, at the left side of the boat, he has a reaction. And he, like, sees you hurt his friend, and he waves a hand at you, Atticus. And all of a sudden, you feel like tiny little bites all over your skin. And it honestly... Oh like takes you back to that moment when you were underneath Iris Hill and you went through that long tunnel and you came out and there were all those little rats. While they didn't attack you, it has this feeling as if that swarm was all over you. Give me a will save. What is this? Oh no, Atticus. Oh no. Uh, I'm looking if I have anything. Uh, this is just Will. Okay. All right. Uh, poisons, no. Disease, no. This is just Will. It's a, it, yeah, it's like an illusion. It's an illusion. Uh, that is a 26. That is a pass. Uh, so, yeah, this, this sensation of, like, dozens of rats nibbling at your body just immediately goes away. Whatever that was did not affect you. I didn't like it. Um, 
<laughs> yeah, I it reminded me uh, when I was under Iris Hill. <laughs> you say aloud to yourself. It is Aldo's turn. Uh, Aldo, it, yeah, he doesn't like that this fellow is right up in his grill, so he is going to withdraw to the bowward. Blow the sail here. And he is going, he's going to toss another acid flask at the guy that he was just in melee with. Okay. Uh, that is a 27 to hit. 27's a hit. Okay, so that is four points of acid damage right now. And he okay. will take persistent damage on his turn. And I'm going to throw a fire flask at him now. Oh, natural one. Oh, oh dear. Oh, no. Oh, no. The dice giveth. The guy, dice take it away. That's oh. going to be a fan from Boney. Okay, you where are we go going, back to Baton Rouge? <laughs> you want to stay, uh, stay down in Louisiana? Uh, no, let's go to uh, Helena, Montana. <laughs> oh, okay. There definitely the won't capital. be anybody there. Yeah, I'm sure we have a lot of... I don't the, know why we capital. haven't done a show there yet. Well, wow, Canada, this Montana. Is, that is not what I expected. <laughs> uh, I think we need more of this. Uh, San Diego, California. <laughs> San Diego, come on. Uh, I know it's ridiculous. <laughs> That's the closest. Um, there's no, there's the no closest. one in the Mountain Time Zone. That's crazy. Well, it's the closest we don't know it. We don't have anyone in ranged fumble. It's a, it's all very specific, oh. but it's oh, also yeah, yeah, yeah. and then and then approved because like we got to read through these things, so it, it takes a while. Um, Max from San Diego, I Hi, said Max. duck. If a creature is providing cover to your target, your at your attack f strikes the first creature providing a cover bonus to your target for normal damage. If no creature is providing cover to your target, your attack ricochets and hits a random target, yourself included, within range for normal damage. Oh, okay. Uh, so, it's, so it's a random. So it could uh, be. It's, it's a, wait, didn't Sir Julie provide cover? No. No, Just because I was right. I was throwing at the the one. Oh, oh you're throwing here, at the guy so. on the boat. Okay. So yeah, yeah, it would yeah. be like you, Sir Julie, the guys Sir Julie's in with, and the and the the priest, right? So it, I mean, it's I random. It would, it's not. It's random. Yeah. Well, like all me and the three villains and Sir Julie, I think they're all within range. So I would think. Uh, yeah. All right. So we'll say um, villain one is one. Uh, the the guy I'm pinging here that's on the boat with you is one. Uh, then okay. the the guy behind him is two. Uh, the one next to Sir Julius three, uh, Sir Julius four, and you are five. Reroll a six. Okay. Roll a d six. Oh me? Oh y yeah. Yeah. You, you, yeah, you yeah, bring you your own doom. Uh, four. <laughs> That's, That's Sir, Sir Julius. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, but does the other guy of take course. splash damage <laughs> from the fire uh, bomb? Yeah, they should. They should. Uh, well, the one, yeah, the guy uh, adjacent to her should take uh, two points some, of splash some. damage. Okay. Uh, but she and then takes, Sir Julie takes. She takes uh, fifteen points of damage. Oh, oh man! Of course, you are a strong. Of this would happen. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I threw it, and it like it it pinged off the side of the cabin, and went at a ninety degree angle and hit Sir Julie right in the back and exploded. Uh, yeah. Sorry, you, oh, I do not blame dear. you. Oh, I, I do not blame what are the you. What the odds of that? No? The odds when you of the world conspiring against me in this particular moment. I do not blame wow. you. It is the universe who seeks to destroy me. Right, good on you, fair dinkum. <laughs> fair dinkum. <laughs> When you threw that first uh, bomb and hit that first guy, the guy that's standing right next to Sir Julie did the same thing to you that ha that the guy did to a Atticus. He like reached out and waved his fingers at you and you just start feeling all these tiny little bites of things crawling all over you. Give me a will save. Okay, will save. Uh, oh, come on, 16. Oh dear. Oh, no. Uh, 
So you just feel immediately as this guy waves his hand at you, all hail the water rat. Dozens of rats crawling all over your skin. You look down, you don't see anything, but you know that telltale feeling, long tails, and you just feel them gnawing and nibbling. You become clumsy one and take a minus 10 foot penalty to your speed. Oh, Uh, wow. Oh my God. Something is happening to you. Clumsy one. I don't think we've ever experienced clumsy. No. Clumsy one. Your movements become clumsy and inexact. Clumsy always includes a value. You take a status penalty equal to the condition value to dexterity based checks and DCs including AC, reflex saves, ranged attack rolls, and skill oh. checks using acrobatic stealth and theory. So luckily it won't affect me at all. <laughs> oh man, it is everything you fun. do, Aldo. <laughs> I know. <laughs> oh. Oh, wow. uh, all right, clumsy one and a minus 10 uh, to speed. What is going on with these weird fishermen? Weird know, lying fishermen. Talk. Troy, I don't <laughs> think uh, they're fishermen. Hey, listen. Yeah. Oh. Who knows? Ave Maria. Fourth lie. I think that um, might be another lie. Yeah. Ave's like, they lied about being fishermen. They lied about their boat sinking. What else are they lying about? And uh, <laughs> she would like to do a perception check, like a free action, if I can, perception check to see. I know they're like hooded figures, but now one's on the boat and they're a little closer. Are they, she's looking like, are they undead? She recognizes they did a harm spell. She's just trying to figure out who the hell these guys are. All right, so first action, you want to roll a perception check? That costs an action. Yeah, that costs an action. Does it cost one one action? I'll take it. In combat, yeah. I'll take it. Uh, So that's going to be a 30 total. All right. Um, You see, now that you're up close, that they are indeed a uh, two men, two women, two elves and two humans. Um, The thing that jumps out at you, in addition to their tridents that they were hiding underwater, is that they're all wearing a symbol. Roll the 30. Uh, It looks like a a symbol around their neck of of a rat, like walking on water. Huh. Now, if All you right, wanted, you could roll. Helpful. You could take a second action to roll a religion check to try and figure out what that means. If you want to burn yeah, that check, I or wait wanna, till next round. I want to attack them. I'll wait till next round. I'm going yeah. to instead. Uh, this is what's kind of another... great about two E, because you you burn that first action now, and you're like, you know what? Next round, I'll take one of those actions. I don't know what the hell to do with it. Do a religion. Check. Yeah, yeah, yeah you're like slowly piecing it together during the fight. Yeah, yeah it makes yeah. sense. It, cool. it, it, it does make sense. Uh, but I'm going to do another tried and true <laughs> fireball, uh, ah. and I'm going to hit it to the very back uh, right corner of the boat to get in the range uh, all three Johns, but not Sir Julie. So like the very far back corner. Ooh, what, a, what is it? Thirty uh, foot? I see Sir Julian there everywhere. It's a Twenty. Twenty foot. It's only twenty. Yeah. Yeah. I can do it. Yeah, yeah. If yeah, I hit the back corner of it the looks boat, like I it. can do it. Yeah, it's I don't dirty, like it. It's barely. a dirty pool. It's dirty pool, it's dirty. but it looks it's right. Dirty. <laughs> it's dirty, but I, I, hit I those, can't. I, I hit those bumpers, and I hit that one ball first, and it's fine. I can sink it. It's hey, cool. Ball don't lie. Uh, you play an APA hey, rules, I'm playing uh, dirty dirty bar rules. I get to sink this one. So. <laughs> Oh my All God! Right, Sydney was telling lie. me at the last show about uh, running into this guy in a dive bar playing pool, who was like, "Uh, that's not APA rules." It was like he walked jumping up on her the about table like and he professional was professional like, pool playing oh. rules. <laughs> Sydney like was like, "Midnight Get the fuck in a, out of the bar in a fucking dive bar," and he's like, "Do you know APA?" He was British, and I was like, "I'm gonna kick of course someone's he was ass British. tonight." What a jerk. What a jerk. I know. Such a dick. And then he absolutely buried me because I'm bad at pool. But anyway. Uh, uh, all right. I'm going to roll some reflex saves. It's yeah, roll your DC reflex 25. Saves. 25 basic. You said? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 25. You're basic. Uh, first roll, uh, critical fail. Uh, that's the guy that was nice. on the ropes. <laughs> yes, Second guy. 
Uh, second guy, exactly 25, so I'll take half damage. Uh, and then third guy, uh, 26. I actually rolled well. Okay. Uh, but the so first guy damage, critically failed. Full damage. Oh, double damage. Which was the first double, guy? The guy who only had half, two half. hit points left? That guy's So, yeah. it's going to be 23 total. So, double for him. That's going to be 46. So, that I guy takes 46. Dead. And he's just like... Ah, 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 <laughs> and he just like explodes uh, in a fire. Fiery uh, inferno. And then the other guys take half. So, it's 23. So, we'll say 11. Um, 11 to that guy, 11 to the guy next to Sir Julie. And that flame licks right up against your ankle, Sir Julie, but doesn't hit you. Sorry. One, that's three, ac oh, that's, that was three actions altogether. Okay, great, now it, it is Sir yeah. Julie's turn. Oh, actually, you know what? I can't see it, forget it. Okay, uh, Sir Julie. Okay, Sir Julie is gonna take her first strike against the guy she's currently in melee with. Uh, with the great sword, despite uh, her creeping sense of dread about everything in the world, natural one. There oh, it is. there's a reason you had that dread. Miss, uh, it's all that boning you did with Revan and Gossa. <laughs> made your sword hand weak. <laughs> oh no. Yeah. What, what city, Matthew? They what tell city you not to would do you that like, like your doom to come from? Wrestling match. Right. Oh, hey, Matthew, what's, what's, two what's, people the, same what's the time? saddest city? What's the saddest city? I'm not gonna go there. I'm surely going to insult somebody, no matter how obscure a city I, I pick. <laughs> so why don't we Gary. just go with the happiest Gary place on, on Earth, Orlando, Florida. <laughs> Orlando. I think you answered the question. Florida. Yeah, I think you did. Uh, all right, here we go. What do we got near Orlando? This is so lame. Uh, okay, I'm gonna work on this. Uh, we got Taylor from Washington, D.C. <laughs> Hi, right, Taylor. Oh, that's amazing. Uh, Taylor from hey, Washington. Taylor. What's up, Taylor? Uh, the Yips. You're familiar with The Yips as a, as a baseball fan? You're embarrassed by your mistake. It's rattled your confidence and made it so you're overthinking everything. But as your training kicks back in, it gets better. For 1d4 rounds, your multi-attack penalties are inverted, i.e. penalty for your third attack is on your first attack, second on your second, and no penalty for your third. Interesting. So for 1d4 rounds, your penalties are inverted, so you have to attack three times to get your best attack. That's interesting. Oh, interesting. That's very interesting. Wow, that's, that's fun. Interesting. Wow. Did that and apply that's this round uh, since I got ma my, my max attack bonus at this already? Or is it kick in next uh, round? It's up to Troy. But I mean, the second one would be the same. So, it, yeah, second the second would attack the wouldn't, wouldn't matter. Yeah. The third one this, this would be your best attack bonus. Yeah, I don't know. But I've already had I one, so I don't want to cheat, you know? I wasn't yeah. listening. It would have to my, be next my... round. It would have to start next <laughs> yeah, round. Yeah, it would just start it next round. Sure. Right, we'll start next round. Okay, great. Uh, Sir Julie uh, comes down with a serious case of the yips. Just call her Chuck Knobloch. And, uh, and she... <laughs> is instead going to, she's going to break free from this encounter seeing Aldo uh, kind of facing off against this guy solo and is going to interpose herself between uh, Aldo and that uh, cult dude and will take her second attack against him. Perhaps I shall try my luck against you, whippersnapper. Okay, that's, uh, that's, that's less bad. 21 is a miss. 21 is a miss. It's a known Sir miss. Julie we also lost focus on your camera. You wanna? Yeah. Give us a little hand. Right in the, hey. in the soaps. Ah. <laughs> it's like magic. <laughs> okay. That is my uh, turn. Great. This, my turn. This guy here uh, at the edge of the boat uh, is going to first action leap. Second action, get right up next to Ave Maria and Atticus. And final action. I can cast harm as a one action spell, but it has a range of touch. So that's yeah. what I'm going to do. 
So I'm going to touch uh, one, two, three, Atticus, four, five, six, Ave Maria. Uh, four, five, six, it was a six, Ave Maria. So Don't you have uh, to make right. like a melee attack? I have to, though, I have to, to make an attack me? roll. Yeah. I do. Yeah. Um, here we go. Natural 20. <laughs> Natural 20 on a magic oh. crit! The old oh, GCP on, on the green die. Oh, oh man, on a heightened no. harm. This is a heightened harm, John! I uh, hate dear. this. Uh, pick a city, Troy. It's not gonna matter, but go ahead. <laughs> All right, um, who's, what's, who's really evil? Berlin! <laughs> Have you been to Berlin recently? <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Uh, okay, here we go. Uh, Nobody speaks German could be an evil man. <laughs> We've got Oliver from Malmo, Skan County, Sweden. I don't know if oh, I pronounced enough. any of those names right outside yeah, of Oliver, but thank you. Oliver enough. from Sweden. Hi, Oliver. Complete lack of color spray. Your magic strikes the target's eyes, instantly altering how they see the world. Your target must make a will save. What? Ooh. Okay, and you know what, Whoa. Troy? I'm also rolling a special green die that a, a member of the Nash gave me, so I'm going against you. Is that weighted? No. Uh, this would be against the creature's DC, Troy. So you said will save, right? Will yeah. save. It's a 33. It's a critical. <laughs> critical size. Critical. No, okay. no additional effect. So it's just the normal spell damage. But is it double damage or no? Because it doesn't say double damage in the spell. No, because basically, if you right. fail, this makes you blind. If it, you critically fail, it's like you're blind for a long time. So it, it was pretty oh, devastating God. if you failed those saves. Ooh. But a critical success is no, uh, no effect. No, effect. no additional effect. Well, it's weird because there's still a fortitude save for the damage of the spell. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, well, yeah, well, I think that, would that happens regularly. Save. Yeah. That happens regularly. Yeah. All right, so yeah. now give me the fortitude save against the spell. Yeah. Save. God, because that could have been really brutal damage. That's still, I'm rolling really good. I love this guy. That's a 28. 28 Ooh. is a regular pass, so you're going to take half damage again. Really not an awesome harm spell. Um, okay. So you'll take six points of damage. Um, oh man, that turned really quickly into something not that bad at all. Not that bad. Thank you, Oliver, in Sweden. Thank you, Oliver, from Sweden. Thanks, Oliver. Thank you. All right, uh, the one next to Sir Julie, this is the one that's going to take persistent damage at the end of its action, is going to channel smite again because I really want to hit this. Uh, I just used. Okay, here we go. Uh, come on, baby! 24, miss. Uh, it's two actions to smite, uh, and so I will then uh, slide back away from you. And then the last one will, oh God, if I roll well, I can hit this. And you have good for it too. So he's just gonna like do a leaping, and uh, move up to you and try to channel smite. And he missed. So that's it. it oh, really now give me the persist. To... <laughs> give me the really persistent damage on, on that you, first guy. Okay. Uh, that is nine points. Uh, well, oh, that's the end of his turn. Yeah. So that's nine points of acid and then, damage, and then a DC 15 flat check, which I failed. So he remains burning uh, from acid. Uh, okay. He remains burning. Round three. Burn. Atticus Grip. Atticus Grip. Uh, all right, Atticus will take uh, the one with the persistent damage who just moved back from Sir Julie. He's going to grab his bones and shake them. Uh, so he's going to cast Bone Shaker on this guy on the bone edge of the Bone Shaker. Bone. This guy is right on the edge of the gunnel. The gunnel! And about 15 oh. feet from Sir Julie. 
You uh, going after the one on the gun? No. You going after the one on the gun? Go ahead and roll a fortitude save and roll like you roll for Sydney. Uh, well, I can't promise that. Uh, let's see. <laughs> 21. 21 is a failure. Oh. Ooh. B. Okay. Just need 15 minutes to read this. Because I never expect. Cool. <laughs> uh, no, okay. You are going to, to... Is this actually possible? I didn't have... I didn't have the die? What? What, what die do you need, though? A thousand though? dice, and I didn't have a D8. Uh, I needed a D8? Uh, all right. Could have had a D8. Here we go. Yeah, Ooh, good start, bro. Yeah, good start. Uh, oh, that's... Okay, so you take 18 points of damage, and uh, I... There's no ant. He's dead. All right. Right. <laughs> right. Brilliant. Brilliant. However, the one right next to him, as a reaction, does that same thing that he did before to you. Does that, John? Oh, man, every time. All hail the water rat! All hail the water. I am a rat. I feel nothing. Bam. Made it. Success. Poop. Salad. Uh, The the total is 28. I assume it's not a crit. Uh, It's not. It's just a pass or fail for that one. Um, do you have any actions left? Uh, no. I cast the three action version just in case he lived. I was going to do something terrible. Uh, oh, jolly it's... good round. Jolly good round. A jolly good uh, round. All right. All. <laughs> it is Aldo <laughs> Casimir's turn. Aldo, you're feeling a little clumsy. Yeah, I've got, I'm distracted by all this biting going on all over my body. I actually, I've talked about it. Like I stepped in a red ant hill once. Oh. And, I, and the ants like started running up my legs and like biting me, and for years after, I would like feel phantom ants crawling up my legs. It was the worst yeah. thing in the world. So I can understand oh, why it would dude. make me. I oh. I've always been so scared of that happening to me. Like it's never happened to me, and I've oh. always been so scared of it. Oh, it was the uh, worst. Sorry, it was on our yeah, playground I, too in our elementary. And I just want to interrupt your turn real quick while you're thinking about what you're going to do. I, I meant to do this on my turn, but I forgot, and I got uh, I got wrapped up in my, my bone shaking. I wanted to thank uh, a member of the nation, a couple members of the nation, actually, because I got a really nice uh, uh, present in the mail. So a, a long time ago, at Regal Coat of Arms, made a, a gorgeous for Highbury uh, coat of arms. And then uh, Eric, uh, wise jester on Twitch, some of you may know him, made this gorgeous thing that I can hang in my room. Oh, oh wow! Out. Oh, cool! How awesome is that? It's like a canvas uh, oh, coat of that. arms for the rose That's and the really light. Really cool. Oh, uh, wow. it's, two it's griffins, gorgeous. Two griffins. What on a field vert? Yeah, rampant. on a field vert. Rampant. Well, this is rampant. and this is rampant on a field vert, and this is old highbury. But Eric, not to be outdone, also did new highbury. Look at that. Oh it's the, oh, the nice. griffin and the wolf. Oh, wow. On a field of blood. I mean, come oh, on. Wow. That's amazing. Aren't they gorgeous? Nice little thing that's to really, hang around. Really, really, really Thank cool. you so much, Eric. I just wanted to get that out there. Because <laughs> I didn't know how else awesome. to thank you. Uh, Thanks, on Eric, for so Joe's Thank you very present. much. Yes, thank you. Sorry, Skid. Go on. Thank you. Uh, okay, so a uh, fun fact, by the way, Knobloch, I believe, German for garlic. True. Except it's pronounced <laughs> Knobloch. Uh, <laughs> All right, I'm going to throw another acid flask at uh, the guy adjacent fighting Sir Julie right now. Throw an acid flask gotcha. in his general direction. His general direction. Oh, Knock him right off. 20, 20. That's a miss. 20 is a miss, yeah. It is. It is. Uh, By the rules. Right, and I'm gonna th- By the rules of the game. It's a rule thing. All right, and uh, yeah, I'm gonna try again. <laughs> okay. Nope, miss again. I'm gonna miss again. Oh. Uh, so I'm going. I'm gonna. Yeah, I guess I'm gonna just. I'm gonna do a perception check for my last action to see if I can see anything noteworthy about them that we haven't seen so far. Uh, that is a 21. Um. Yeah, nothing 
really uh, is jumping out at you. Um, it, what about it their armor? Looks... Now that he's gotten a little closer, like is it leather? Is it chain? Yeah, it does. Like, can it we does see look it all? like some sort of leather armor. Um, okay. And uh, awesome. yeah, I mean that's not really that exciting. Um, and I just don't think there's anything else. Um, well, knowing that it's magic, well, here, I mean, that's cool. We have leather armor. Yeah, yeah. You, you do see some sort of magical armor, and all four of them are wearing it. The other thing I'll say that you notice is that the, the fishing boat looks like it's, like, battered. Like it was uh, in some sort of battle. Or, or like, oh, like maybe these it. guys took it over. Yeah, they stole it yeah. from fishermen. They killed fishermen yeah. and took it. Yeah, that's that, that, I want to give you something for a good roll there. Um, what a bunch of pieces. Of okay. Shit. I know. And Marie's two el- and two elves too, Skid. Immortal, yeah. wise, and, and fair. Elves. All beings. I'm just I'm more um, disappointed than anything. <laughs> <laughs> I'm more disappointed than angry at the elves. I don't wanna waste time uh, on my turn wasting an action. If there's really nothing to see, let me know. But I was thinking of doing a religion check from my previous just on the symbol and everything, if I would know. Uh, yeah, go for it. Yeah, okay. Let's I also see. want to take this moment to thank Queer Giraffe for pointing out that uh, Matthew's clear passive-aggressive hatred of me getting gifts uh, indicates he'd like his own crest or banner made for him. <laughs> Possibly for yeah. uh, Lord Northwood. <laughs> yeah. Have you ever described or the Sir, coat of arms? The Northwood coat of arms? No, because the banner he carries for mechanics in the game is an Order of the Blue Rose banner. So I've, I should, uh, I should, so just, he's I should just, come up uh, with what it is, what it is though. Yeah. You should yeah, have you Alfie should. Should. stitch a new one. He's a tremendous yeah. artist. Yeah, he, he would, that would be a good idea. Yeah. And I, and I originally did that for Sir Will. Like, I made up his coat of arms, but I was supposed to be the Order of the Shield. Like, he was a cavalier. He was Order of the Shield. Oh, right. And they already have a coat of arms, but I was like, Ah, fuck it. <laughs> what was yeah. <laughs> what, uh, what's your uh, role? They rolled a, a 31. 31 on their religion. Ooh. 31. You start digging through your memory trying to figure out what religion is this? The water what rat, rat king. Yeah. A rat <laughs> walking on water, and you realize that they must be worshippers of Hanspur. Oh my gosh, I know this. This has been teasing in the back of my head. Hanspur is uh, totally like in 1E and was in a module I ran. And there was like a, a, a statue of a giant rat and it was like to Hanspur. And this, this whole time has been like itching at the back of my mind. I'm like, I know that, I know that there's a rat deity uh, that people worship. Yep, cool. Yeah, and, and it, is a, it is a forbidden deity. It's like... There's, yeah. there's a lot that goes on. You're trying to remember everything, but in the heat of battle, we'll have to talk about it later. And he is literally, like, his domain is the Selen River. He is on the Selen River, so this makes complete sense oh. that he ran into these people. Um, wow. That's that's a cool touch. It's a cool detail. Yeah, nice one, Troy. Uh, all right, now <laughs> yeah, doing this. this. And yeah. Troy made it up is... on, the, on the spot. <laughs> All wow. day. It's, it's just, it it's his deep familiarity with the Galarian deities. That's what it is. <laughs> right. We all know I'm a lore whore. whore. <laughs> a big also, lore whore. <laughs> Hansper is a demigod. He's not even like a full god. And Ave yeah. is like a Paul. Why don't you stop Googling it? And just play <laughs> Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Ave is a Paul. Uh, and she already with her scimitar drawn from when she first approached the boat, she is going to cut into this heretic worshiper uh, with her scimitar. <sighs> Ooh, I rolled so good. Natty 18. Nice. That's gonna be That is 30. good, that's juicy. Ooh. 30 is a hit. And now I'm gonna do the damage. Yes. Oh, All right. You it's are. For 15 minutes. <laughs> oh, I also rolled great. Uh, that's going to be uh, an 11 for damage. Shipow Pow, oh, he's and... dead. Oh, nice. nice. No end I was necessary. Say, 
You get some bleed as well, but he just bled out, and that's all. Just that's all I need. Blood all over now. You got blood, shit all over this boat, uh, but he's dead. <laughs> he starts shitting so himself. <laughs> oh yeah, I know. He's, he's, his bowels have let go. It's a real mess. Now let me ask you this: You got one action left. Do you want to uh, do anything? Uh, yes. She is going to run up, run up to uh, Sir Julie. <laughs> She has just enough movement over these dead bodies, these two dead bodies, squish, squish, squish. And she's gonna run up next to Sir Julie and uh, have her scimitar out to help protect her. She's got her back. What a hero. It is Sir Julie's turn. Sir Julie, there is only he one He has a way of enemy. making it so demeaning. <laughs> There's only one enemy left. You are quite sad. What do you do? Um, I'm sad. I've also got the yips. So here's what I would like to do, and then we can maybe you can tell me how uh, we can work it out. So rather than swing with a great sword, Sir Julie wants to grab the gangplank that they extended and lift it and toss this guy into the into the water. Oh, fun! Does your that fumble is just still apply so to that fun. action? If it's Does your fumble still apply point? to that action? If it's an attack. Uh, yeah, I don't want you game it's, in the system trying to skip your fumble. Uh, no, so it's, yeah, it, it, I'm, I'm, I'm trying. I'm not trying to, to uh, I'm not trying to metagame it. I'm thinking, Mister Drew's like, I, I don't know that I can trust myself to swing this sword. So instead, I'm going to yeah, try no, to end this fight some other way. Yeah, I mean, you it, absolutely. I'm, I'm thinking athletics, but you could talk me yeah. into athletics checks. I think it's great. great. It makes yeah. perfect sense. All right. So Sir Julie will drop her greatsword on the deck and said just with both hands grab the end of the gangplank they extended to board the ship and just try to lift and shake and knock this guy off balance so he'll fall into the water and drown. Um, athletics check. Okay, I'm going to use my hero point ah. for the session because I rolled a natural three. Okay. Come on, get it. Oh. I rolled a natural four on the second try. Oh my god! Oh, oh, that was sweet. such a great <laughs> idea. <laughs> it's fun. It's definitely fun. Uh, uh, okay, you can use my halfling luck if you want. I can give you my halfling luck. You're within 30 feet of me. I literally am right next to you. And you can re-roll. Oh wait. Nope, never mind. It's just for checks. I'm so sorry. It's not for attack rolls. Sorry. Oh. Sorry, it is a check. Rules. That wasn't an attack. Tonight, I mean, that wasn't mean, an, yeah, an athletics check. check. Yeah. Oh, you're right. Okay. Yeah. Then please yeah, use my nothing luck. Saturday's light. <laughs> and and you have minute. the ability that lets you share that luck? Yep, I do. I have a feat. Uh, and I can I can share it. Shared luck is my feat. That's fair luck. Or my Great. special right. ability. Uh, skill check maybe or saving a, throw. Maybe a bit of Saren Ray's light. Cuts through the clouds of gloom, hovering on with Sir Julie's <laughs> thoughts. All right, yeah. Okay. Natural three. Oh, oh my god! My You've god. got to be kidding me! <laughs> Amazing! Uh, wow! I, I, that that Saren Ray was full of shit, man. You have lost the light of Saren Ray, and I hope <sighs> you find it someday. She's so sad. All right. How many actions do you think it was for me to try? That was just one action. Just one really sad action. <laughs> one really, really sad action. Okay. Uh, um, second action, Sir Julie will pick up her greatsword. Third action, she'll swing at her worst attack bonus because of the yip. Um, that's amazing. Okay, natural 19. <laughs> okay. I changed dice. Uh, and what's your 25 bonus? 25 actually hits. Oh my yes. god. Awesome. Amazing. Oh. Amazing. Get some D12. Uh, okay, that is going to be 17 points of depth. Oh my gosh. Uh, all right, he is just like wavering there on the side of the boat. Uh, and it is his turn, and he will try to channel smite you. Because I'm determined to hit this get him, once. Get him, LaValle. <laughs> oh, oh, Natty 16. Uh, 28. That's good. 28, Matthew. Oh, that'll, that's Don't lie, me. Matthew. Exactly. Don't lie. Exactly. Exactly. Oh, oh no. Well, I had to roll a 16, a 16 or higher. Oh. No. Uh, all right. I rolled like a 24 too. All right, so great. Great. So it's going to do regular damage plus 
uh, 3d8. Well, actually, yeah, you don't get a save on that. So uh, here we go. Oh, this is fun. What kind of damage? Uh, first, it's going to be eight points of piercing damage, and then it's going to be 16 points of negative energy damage. Oh. Uh, Be careful that. And then he sl then he slides back onto the boat, and it is Atticus's turn. One enemy left. What do you do? Atticus looking down at one enemy left. Um, Atticus is going to. Let's see. He will move. Uh, he will move past the downed bodies over to the edge of the ship overlooking the other boat uh, about 10 feet from the gangplank. Looking down at this dude on the other boat and he is just going to try to pull some um, yeah, so the like fishing supplies that were left by these people that they killed uh, some of the weighted tackle he's just going to take from behind the guy and he's going to telekinetically shoo, 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 shoo. Uh, throw it at him. Uh, so <laughs> it just starts like Love whipping it. from up from under the boat. The last revenge of the fishermen they killed. Uh, yes. That is a 29 to hit. That is a hit. That is a hit. That nice. is phenom sauce. And oh, come on. Why does it take me so long to do everything? It's because I stink. Uh, and <laughs> loading times are a pain in the ass. But I think I already know the damage. And I do stink. Two ones. Uh, that is 11 points of damage. Well, not only was that a cool use of my previous flavor text in uh, incorporating the fishing tackle, uh, but that is also enough to kill the final. Yes! yes! Can spill worshippers to revenge of the fishermen! Yes. <laughs> Amazing. A handspur worshipper falls, but all three of you look to Aldo and... He's like, I don't know, Aldo, are you itching yourself? How is this playing for you? I'm like, yeah, I'm like slapping at my arms, like now that the last enemy has fallen. He's just like, ah, bugger! Ah! He just keeps like smacking at his arms, like, think, and his and his body, thinking that these some creatures are, are biting him under his clothes. Uh, uh. Ave is going to cast uh, Dispel Magic, looking over at Aldo. And nothing happens. Oh. She runs up to Aldo. I, she, I mean, this should have worked. She runs up, she goes, Aldo, what hell is he? What's, what's going on? And he's like, he rolls up his sleeves, like he makes sure that there's nothing actually there. And I'm gonna do an arcana check to see if I know what this is and how long it's going to last. Uh, that is a 31. 31. If she tells you that she cast, um, uh, what did you cast again there, Ave? Uh, a dispel magic. Dispel magic. And it didn't go away. Uh, you think you have been cursed. Oh. Oh, no, well, no. Curse oh, sucks. by this <laughs> god. Oh, oh, boy. They can curse as a reaction? That's pretty sweet. That's, that's really... Continually? Wow. Like, the entire battle they were doing this. That's crazy. Now, he, here's the thing, is you can spend some time now to try and figure out what this was. Uh, go back into yeah. your brain and research, like, what kind of curse is this? Is there a cure to this curse? Is it just somebody cast remove curse, which I don't know if Ave has? Um, you can spend some time to try and figure that out if you want. Yes, um, his yeah. face just falls, and he realizes like this, this could drive me insane. Like if if I can't get rid of this, I'll go mad and take oh my, my own God. Life. Constant like, itching. I can't sleep. Yeah, it's like horrible. You're just getting over scurvy. Um, I know. <laughs> It's been a hot so enough week. Sir, Sir Julie dealing with melancholia. Uh, Atticus some, having some unknown delusions. 
And now you have this curse where you're just, oh God, that feeling. Like when I had that liver problem, when I had the negative reaction I remember that. You were itching your you know, skin off. People that have liver damage, it's it makes you itch constantly. I still have marks on my legs to this day that are healing. Like you cannot stop itching. You'll be in bed all night itching. I used to have to drink this paste. It is the worst. So I can imagine Ugh. what this feels. Like you just want to stick a knife in your leg. Um, so... Uh, Skywin comes aboard and she's like, is, every, is everyone all right? Yes, we defeated them easily enough. But they were what worshipping right. some rat creature. I don't know. Never seen anything like it. Hands what about right. you, Ave? Have you ever seen anything like it? No, I haven't, but I know who they were worshipping, Skywin. Captain Skywin. Thank you. Uh, it's, for using my title. It's a demigod. Uh, they call it Hanspur. It's a giant rat, and supposedly it lives in the Selen River, so I'm not surprised we ran into these heretics. But Well, Ave Maria, we you don't have to tell me about Hanspur. I know about the worship of Hanspur in these parts. Trouble is, I think we're going to run afoul of more of them. But normally, they leave you alone. Hansper is a, a neutral god. Sometimes. There is a town coming up we need to make a stop at, Riverton. I didn't want to stop there if I didn't have to, but now with all these new mouths to feed, we've run out of stores. I can't risk going any further without a stop. It's going to be another three or four days before we get to the nation of Galt. It's a small town, Riverton. But now, uh, we're on the edge of the River Kingdoms. And Riverton is full of worshippers of Hansper. The only laws in this small community are the erratic decrees of the local demagogue. An elven man named Nyrel Twiceborn. They call him the River Prophet. Now these people aren't all like these ones that just attacked us. They're not fanaticists like the Rasmeri either, but they're still weird. <laughs> For our purposes, Riverton should be safe, unless all of them have turned into what these people have become. Normally they're accustomed to having visitors or even guides asking for Nyrell's advice. He knows a lot about the river in these parts, but the citizens Zeal for pestering visitors to convert them to their god discourages lengthy stays. We have to stop there, but be on guard and keep your mouth shut. And he points to Ave and keep your icons hidden. They don't need to know who you worship. We'll stop there. If you want to take a dinghy with me to shore, just to make sure everything's all right. You stay on shore and I'll go in, get what we need, and we'll get the fuck out of there. Right. Right. Yes. Peachy. Right. <laughs> um, can we st steal this fucking magic armor? Can we? Yeah. Can we like, see what's these... up with the armor and the yeah, boat? What is this magic armor? Is it sweet? Yeah. You can just shwana wana wam wam. Figure out that they're all wearing plus one resilient leather armor. Oh Yay. my god. Oh. Whoa, okay. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> oh my gosh. And there's more of it? Wow. Re resilient runes imbue armor with additional protective magic. This grants the wearer a plus one item bonus to saving throws. Oh my god. Oh. That's awesome. Yeah, so it's plus one armor Amazing. and you get a plus one to all your saves. Um, That's great. I imagine all of you can wear leather, but... Uh, I don't know if it's better than what you're currently wearing. Nah. Yeah, it's the resilience is pretty cool, but... Atticus, but yeah. And there's no way to transfer runes or anything from armor to other armor, right? Yeah, right. No. You can remove runes, <laughs> can't you? Can you? I think I I, th I, I don't think know. you just need I to craft. So. Like I think you just need. I think it's under crafting. Like, you can like. I'm gonna look this up. I'm gonna look this up. Yeah, look it up. It might, might be kind of a game thing. Someone to be like, it. would it make yeah, you guys happy like... if you could just remove runes? 
We'll figure it out. I don't know. If if you say it takes like three weeks, fair enough. Like maybe I don't get it until a, a certain time, but I, I will look it up to see what the crafting rules say. Okay. Um, I'm yeah, sure they it's... seem to be saying you, you, chat seems to be saying you can do it. You just need a, yeah. but you do need a crafting check. Crafting, yeah, love it could the, be a, the chat. a multi-week thing or it might be like a critical failure on a crafting could set you back or add time or something, who knows. But uh, yeah. you keep sailing and uh, you're sailing on um, Lake Callus. You know, we haven't looked at this map in a while, but take a look at uh, Roll Twanzoni here and I'll show you the journey map. Um, wow. And there, there's Lake Callus that you're sailing on and this is where Riverton is. Oh, uh, right. So you're still, uh, see how far okay. I kick. You've been traveling for 49 days, and look how far away you still are from Casimir. <laughs> Amazing. Surely there must have been a faster way to travel. <laughs> if you could all fly. Flight. <laughs> um, so you're, you're, you're cutting through Lake Callus. She says she needs to stop at Riverton. Um, and then you're, like she said, three or four days away from the nation of Gaul. She wants to make another stop. But with all these extra people that you've added to the boat, you've been just going through food like crazy. She's worried you won't um, make it. I mean, hell, Aldo's just getting over scurvy. So you, the boat comes in and she says, I don't want to bring all the boat all the way in uh, to the dock. So why don't the five of us just hop on a dinghy? And uh, you, you continue to earn your keep around here, uh, keeping me safe. Uh, and you've done a great job so far. Uh, I'll hop off. If I see that everything's fine, I'll just zip into town. You stretch your sea legs so you can take a break from the 95 people we have on the Starlink. And uh, when I get what I, <laughs> we need, we'll load up the dinghy and we'll bring it back to the Starlink. Does that sound good? And is this the same day as this other encounter? Like, do we just go right uh, from there to here? Or is it like a day later? Uh, it is, I believe it is all the same day. Yes. I'm going to, I'm going to spend some time to heal, refocus, heal, get myself. Heal, refocus, heal. Okay. Um, great. When you're in the boat, um, she's looking around and, uh, rowing. feels weird asking you to row so she rose she's like it's good for me i need to I need to get some exercise um, all, right. all our bodies will come to rot anyway <laughs> so julie i've been meaning to talk to you you've been very morose lately and it's bringing down the morale of the crew and it's really bumming me out and did you bang Rebin and gossa <laughs> the question is about not did i bang Rebin and gossa the question is were any of us able to rise above this thick and unyielding sense of doom that is set upon us? <laughs> and the answer is briefly, one time, just a little bit. Just a little bit. <laughs> Once we all three got in a rhythm, it took, it took some days of practice. <laughs> just, you know. Does that answer your question, Captain? I thought OJ Simpson you, you was a bummer. You slept with a person. <laughs> He's been really bumming me out. Uh, Chad, he's a, he's, a, he's a delusional man. Anyhow, listen, it's... God, everything's falling apart here. It's getting a little late, and so this really needs to be um, in and out because at sunset every day, there is a mandatory service dedicated to Hanspur, which everyone, including visitors, is required to attend. I've attended one of these compulsory ceremonies before. It's three hours of desperate shoreline flailing by mad, muddy fanatics. So we don't want to be around for that because you can't say no, if you know what I mean. We also want to be gone before any of the community knows what happened because even if they're not all uh, vile like these ones we just fought, they could be friends or family with them. So we're in and we're out, understand? And Ave has hidden uh, her holy symbol on her armor. She's like tied some fabrics around herself, and she also looks less, you know, like a 
cleric paladin type, and she looks a little more, like, roughed up, and she's got, like, a shawl. Uh, yeah. Atticus nods, but doesn't agree. He wants to go. He wants to get in on one of these rituals and see what it's about. I'm, you I'm like mad, mad, that. mad muddy flailing on the river on the riverbank? That's <laughs> Atticus's thing now. Well, he's just curious. He's interested in forbidden activities, a different kind, let's say, than the kind <laughs> Sir Julie's interested in. I think maybe Abe sees threesomes. I think <laughs> no, that's what, what was Sir forbidden Julie. about what I did. <laughs> I think Ave sees you know. this like light. In, in Atticus's eyes, like as uh, Sir, as Skywin is talking about these things, and he's like, you know, listening intently, and uh, she just kind of whispers to him, Atticus, I'm, I'm not like a, a prude, faithful person or something. I have plenty of fun, but the followers of Hasper are not fun, and what they do is not fun, and. I don't know what's going on with you, but I just want you to know that we're all here for you, and and be careful when we get to the mainlands, and, and don't go don't go into the water if they ask you to. You presume I would take your advice after the incident with the fisherman? I... I just was following orders of the captain. I, I'm i sorry that I didn't... Sorry. She looks away. <laughs> and I'm not interested in having fun. I'm interested in learning what it is our enemies can use against us. I want to know how to break them all down and pull them all apart. And he's like looking menacingly <laughs> out over the water. There's something the about line. this, Atticus. This new you. It actually works for you a bit. <laughs> we always thought there was something odd about you. And now it's you're wearing, you're flying your freak, freak, freak flag a bit. Well, these people worship a, a rat god. They worship a rat. What could be stranger than that? <laughs> he has this really weird, uncomfortable, <laughs> like self-deprecating, self-hating laugh. And uh, as Atticus laughs, echoes off the water, you get closer to shore. There's like a few small piers, a couple buildings. It's a small little town. But as you pull uh, the boat onto the shore and kind of drag it up onto the sand, um, you see striding uh, across one of the nearby rickety piers a elf man with like crazy eyes. And his robe... (laughs) His robe is all like patches of other robes mixed together. And his hair is like spiked up with mud. And it's uh, it's just like flopping. And uh, it's he just, he lives a real sight. And there's just like half a dozen or so women trailing behind him. And you are pulling the boat up on shore. And he walks over to you and just thrusts his hands into the air. And we'll see you in Boston. Oh, God. I have no idea what is going to happen here. No (laughs) idea what is going to happen here. Oh, God. It's very icky inside. And it's going to be in Boston. really awful. I'm going to be five Bud Lights in before I make a single decision. This is bad. (laughs) This is bad. Oh, God. (laughs) Thank you for watching, everybody. We will see you in Boston. We'll see you in Boston Nation next next week. Amazing. We'll see you there.